on 56. I don't see color. I see people. I see behavior. I see morals. I see values. I don't see the color of a person's skin. That does not dictate how I should interact with that person. Their behavior, their morals and values dictate how I interact with them. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Following earlier reports of 27-year-old Mark Felder's profound and startling level of pride in his alma mater, the University of Miami alumnus spoke to Onion reporters about his strong affection for the academic institution that left him totally unprepared for the job market and floundering in $50,000 of debt. I would not trade my time at the University of Miami for anything. Miami has the best college experience in the country, hands down. I had an awesome time there, and it's an amazing place. We've got awesome bars, awesome sports, an awesome campus, and we're pretty much right next to the beach. I mean, what more could you want? You have to be crazy not to go there. Felder, who paid over $140,000 in tuition, told reporters he takes an annual trip to see a Hurricanes football game and visit the university that failed to teach him any marketable job skills whatsoever, leaving him so financially helpless he was forced to move back in with his parents after graduating. AMI, AMI, fight, fight, fight! Yeah, it's all about the U, baby! All about the U! That's what I'm talking about! Go Canes, baby! For more on this story, check this week's Onion Review. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. Hey, it's Free Talk Live. The number here is 603-283-6160. That allows you to take control of the airwaves. You can bring up whatever is on your mind. And there's a lot in the news to talk about here tonight. Maybe a little bit of good news out of one of the courts in the United States. We'll start with that. Wow, did they make a correct decision? The broken clock to strike, you know, correctly at least a couple times a day, right? I think they've got a broken calendar because they're like right like once a year. Once a year. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. uh, with you in the studio tonight, it's Ian. Nobody. And Chris. Uh, so also plenty of news that, you know, you might have expected to hear, like Facebook helping the government identify capital rioters from photographs. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, all those things they were telling you over the years where they said, hey, can you identify this person, mm-hmm. this person on your friends list? Well, you were helping mm-hmm. them build a database and helping them build facial recognition software, and now they're using it to turn you into the cops. I mean, what did people yeah. think was going to happen? Yeah. You know, right. I, I was always... the AI guy, I always refuse to do that. I was always discouraging people <laughs> from doing that, but yeah. it's like you can't stop other people from doing it, and you don't have any way to, you know, like convince everybody that knows you to stop doing it, so you're basically... Yeah. <laughs> well, as long as you didn't have a Facebook profile and you didn't, I didn't. Then they wouldn't have been able to. But tag that doesn't you. necessarily mean that there's not a name associated with my face that was done on Good Facebook. Point. Someone might and have been therefore, able to do that. Therefore, yeah. yeah, yeah. Google. Um, I think Google did the same thing with their Picasa. I think it was, and then mm-hmm. before they discontinued it. So, but let's start with the good news here from the Electronic Frontier Foundation, EFF.org. If you're accused of a crime, you have a right to examine and challenge the evidence used against you. It's kind of one of the basic fundamental premises of the Western court system. In an important victory, an appeals court in New Jersey, of all places, agreed with the EFF and the ACLU of New Jersey that a defendant is entitled to see the source code of the software that's used to generate evidence against them. The case of New Jersey versus Pickett involves complex DNA analysis using true Allel software. The software analyzed a DNA sample obtained by swabbing a weapon, a sample that likely contained the DNA of multiple people. The software then asserted that it was likely that the defendant, Corey Pickett, had contributed DNA to that sample, implicating him in the crime. Case closed, right? You see, first thing, if I'm on a jury, first thing I say is likely means nothing without a Mm. number. You know, yeah, it, and it's it's likely th- means it could have been a hundred and sixty one thousand or million people in the United mm-hmm. States over a little over half the population. Sorry, bro. Yeah, no problem. It's it, yeah, and it's it's really a failed. It, it's a failure in understanding the maths behind this um, because we we didn't actually have accurate, especially like when DNA first came out, and for a long time since then, we didn't have a good a, a good understanding of just how. Um, 
you know, uh, you know, they'd say I, I forget what the I forget what they used to say about like one in a million or whatever. Like your DNA would be matching somebody else's, but that number isn't anywhere near what it you know what it, what they claimed originally. Mm -hmm. And so um, as time has gone on and the maths have been better understood and there's more people in the system and everything else, it, we've discovered that it's not anywhere near what. It has been advertised. Meaning, as. you're saying that matches are more likely than they were saying. Uh, right. So you're you're more likely to be found. You, you shouldn't be found guilty. Is basically what I'm saying. And um, but you're saying that the the matching of a DNA is is more likely to yeah, mismatch. Like, I don't know. Or? I don't know what the numbers are exactly mm -hmm. off the top of my head. But it's like instead of being one in a million, it's a one in a hundred thousand or okay. whatever it is. It's mm -hmm. it's drastically different than what they thought they thought like. originally. And therefore, you know, all those cases now are like, well, maybe they the, the decision would have gone differently when there's counter evidence, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> um, but, you know, when people hear one in a million or whatever it is, they it doesn't matter what that counter evidence is because I think it's undisputable and it is disputable. It's just the, the, the information the forensics people were giving at the time wasn't good. It was bad forensics. And so. the thing is, even if there are seven billion genetically unique human beings on earth which mm -hmm. they're not all unique they're identical twins and they're occasional accidents where two people end up with the same dna just out of random do chance. identical but twins have the same dna uh identical twins do okay. uh, fraternal twins do not right um but uh but the other th the thing is it's kind of like the covid test in that they don't see and compare the whole genome they compare some points on it like certain sequences um, or something i i don't know exactly how it works mm. but but basically it's not a full not a it's full not match. a full comparison and that's right, why right. it's not a one in seven billion chance mm. or more than seven billion that you'll uh i wonder why they don't do it though why don't they do a full comparison is that too difficult um, i don't think they can do a full full mm. comparison um Digitizing DNA is still not, I think, doable without very expensive work. Hmm. So I, I think they have like fully done it, just not like it's it's been like hmm. and that maybe not maybe not humans, um, but like well, they've, they've, they've done it. It's just they've not done it in that I once got a job that was parsing an XML file that contained oh, uh, the the entire human. Uh, human genome for a number of people, but this was a absolutely massive file. file. Yeah, right, I had right, to right. do like all kinds of. Yeah, I had to mem map the thing and do all kinds of funky things. Huh. Um, well, let me tell you more about this. So there's this software, right, called True Allel software, and when the defense team wanted to analyze how that software arrived at the conclusion that this was quote unquote likely that the defendant was involved in the crime, uh, the prosecutors and software vendor insisted it was a secret. And sorry, you can't do that. Uh, yeah. and that's Same what this case as the playpen case, then. Right, and we can talk about that, too. Uh, they argued that the defense team shouldn't be allowed to look at how the software actually worked because the <laughs> vendor has a commercial interest in preventing competitors from knowing its trade secrets. That's great. So drop the evidence and mm. let the guy go if, they, if you have nothing else. And the court correctly ruled in favor of the defendant's right to understand and challenge the software being used to implicate him. Because if you're nice. going to go to prison over what this piece of software says, then I don't care what their copyright or their patent is. You have yeah. a right to know how they get the results right. they got. And, and here's, here's the thing is, if they say it's 90% chance that you're guilty and it ends up being 10% off and it's 10% in the other direction and you're, it's only 80% chance of you being guilty and there's other contributing evidence that says you're not guilty, well, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden, maybe maybe it's only 50-50 chance and you'll be found not guilty. I mean, if it's a 90% yeah. chance, that's 10% of a reasonable doubt right there. I mean, that's enough yeah. for well, not guilty. Right, but it, it would be 20%. Doubt you know, because it would still the be whole theory of the legal system is it's better better that a hundred innocent men or that a hundred guilty men go free than that one innocent that, man be in you know, prison. You, right? know what's, you know what's crazy so, is yeah, if somebody tells me it's a 99% chance not guilty as under, a juror, not good enough. You know what's crazy is under British rule it was exactly that. They, they would find like one in ten people guilty. And now it's like they'll find nine in nine people guilty out of ten. Well most people will just take a plea deal. So of course they're getting found guilty. Well even if you don't even if yeah. you don't plead guilty You'll be found guilty. Yeah, yeah, yep. more often than nine, not. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, nine, something like nine town or in the federal nine, courts or, or in all I, of them. yeah, it, it, it might vary a little bit between courts, but yeah, in the mm. federal level for sure. 
So the court uh, ruled in favor of the defendant's right to understand and challenge the code of the software being used to implicate him. The code will not be publicly disclosed, but it will be made available to the defense team. The defense needs this information about TrueLL so it can fairly participate in a procedural step known as a FRY hearing. That's F-R-Y-E, used to ensure that a defendant's rights are not undermined, in, uh, undermined through the introduction of unreliable expert evidence. In previous instances, defense experts have found fatal flaws in this kind of software. For instance, a complex DNA analysis program called FST was shown to have an undisclosed function in the code with the potential to tip the scales against a defendant. After the defense team found the issue, journalists at ProPublica persuaded the court to have the source code disclosed to the public. The issue has nice. risen all around the country, and we filed multiple briefs. Again, this is the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Uh, in different courts, warning of the danger of secret software being used to convict criminal defendants. No one should be imprisoned or executed based on secret evidence that cannot be fairly evaluated for its reliability, and the ruling and in this case will help prevent that th injustice. This extends to more than just DNA testing. It also you know, extends to breathalyzer tests and other, other forms of mm -hmm. testing. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a right to know how yep. it happens. Mm -hmm. All the details. How did you get from this input to that output? And how many people have looked at the source code of the breathalyzers? Very few. Uh, great question. Very few have. 603-283-6160. Uh, That's 603-283-6160. Because a lot of the times, if you start asking for this stuff, they'll just drop the charges. Yeah. And they'll stop the prosecution. Yeah. And then it ends they there. They don't want anybody asking these questions. Bitcoin.com is the best source for learning about cryptocurrency. Go there now, click on Get Started at the top of the page. Once you do that, you'll find a cornucopia of information, neatly organized for your needs. If you're a knowledgeable crypto user, check out news.bitcoin.com where you can get the latest headlines. Bitcoin.com is your source for buying cryptocurrency, getting a wallet app, mining, trading, and all the latest cryptocurrency news, all on a slick and easy-to-use website. All put together by the best minds in the business to teach you about cryptocurrency. Bitcoin.com. Divi's been a pretty good investment for Free Talk Live. Their ad campaign started in September 2019, and from mid-March to mid-July, the values soared by 10 times. It's not too late. Divi's new wallet hasn't even released yet, and other things are happening that I can't even say on the radio. If you want to invest and potentially do well, go to DiviProject.org. I can tell you that FTL is deepening its partnership with the guys from DiviProject.org. Past performance is not an indication of future profit. DiviProject.org. D-I-V-I Project.org. Look, I'm sorry, but you're in for a world of pain if you use Coinomi. The reason is their wallet doesn't support payments. The solution is simple. Let them hear your voice. Message Coinomi on Twitter, it takes five seconds, and tell them AnyPay sent you, because they're on the fence right now, and your voice will prove that people care about using Bitcoin for payments. Go tweet at Coinomi now. Or even better, leave a review in the App Store. They really pay attention there. Thanks. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com to receive our usually weekly news updates by email. Plus, we have a Twitter account at twitter.freetalklive.com, and you can follow us on the decentralized Mastodon platform at toot. Dot freetalklive.com. So please follow us at toot.freetalklive.com and sign up for our emails at news.freetalklive.com. Is spreading the message of liberty, cryptocurrency, and peace around the globe worth $2 per month to you? As you may already know, in addition to our internet feed, LRN.FM broadcasts on free-to-air satellite across North and Central America, as well as Sub-Saharan Africa, and we've been available on satellite for free 24-7 since 2010. The LRN.FM free-to-air satellite signal is reaching some of the most oppressive regimes in the world, and there's no doubt our ideas are making an impact. You can learn more about the channel's impact by watching the three-minute video at fund.lrn.fm. If you'd like to help free minds globally with our ideas of liberty, cryptocurrency, and peace, you can donate as little as $2 per month via fund.lrn.fm. You can help us continue and expand our satellite broadcast to multiple continents. Visit fund.lrn.fm today, and thank you for your help. Don't forget to share the link on social media. That's fund.lrn.fm. 
The LRN.FM social media channels have been revamped. We've eliminated Facebook and focused on other platforms like Twitter and Mastodon, the decentralized alternative to Twitter. On our accounts, you'll find posts from multiple LRN.FM show hosts together in one place. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.lrn.fm or better yet, move to the decentralized Mastodon social media platform at toot.lrn.fm, T-O-O-T.lrn.fm. I think you'll like it. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at fff at fff.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's fff at fff.org. Got Telegram? You can follow our channel there and discuss show prep with other listeners at telegram.freetalklive.com. This is Free Talk Live. The number here is 603-283-6160. That's 603-283-6160. In the studio tonight, it's Ian. Nobody. And Chris. Freedoms Phoenix is a liberty-oriented news aggregation site. If you want the newest and freshest stories and perspectives on current events from those who value liberty, then freedomsphoenix.com has them. Their daily dispatch is the best way to stay up to date on science, technology, historical findings, liberty news, government overspending, and the rise of the police state. It's freedoms with an S, phoenix.com, freedomsphoenix.com. We're going to go to your phone calls and thoughts, and if you want to comment further on this positive court decision for once that uh no the government cannot use secret evidence against you things aren't that bad yet they're bad (laughs) like it's hard to even get into a trial or see the inside of a courtroom these days but if you actually do get into a trial then they still have to show you the evidence against you and in the case of computer programs Mm -hmm. you have the right to see the actual code and have it analyzed by your own expert on you know yeah. what that code does well maybe you get to uh, see the evidence i had, in my trial phil christiana argued in my one pound of marijuana case that uh that he couldn't answer all of the cross-examination questions because it was a matter of national security oh wow. are you serious yes Wow. Yeah. yeah, you know, and I think they hide evidence uh, from people all the time mm-hmm. um, in, in cases. I, I think this is this is an interesting case, but well, the I don't think that's that unusual. The dirt bags at the FBI don't record interviews, mm-hmm. so demand that they record it because they will lie, and there's nothing you can do about it. Well, first of all, you probably Not do the shouldn't interview. be doing it. Yeah, you <laughs> yeah. probably shouldn't be doing an interview with them in the first place. But well, if you, I for didn't whatever have reason, any choice, there were men with guns and chains and clubs involved, and I was going to have that interview. Sure, <laughs> obviously, you don't have to answer any of their questions. No. Uh, but if they're not recording it, then they can't prove that you didn't answer the questions. They could claim you answered the question. Yeah, so, yeah. uh, so it is definitely important to have a recording, in which case it's pretty much your responsibility to do it. Not They won't do oh, it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Don't trust do the monsters. Ask for your lawyer. Right, yeah. Definitely need a lawyer. If, if, uh, the, if the video hurts you, it'll come out. But if the video helps you, yep. they'll lose it. No doubt. They've let's, still got lost video of the Kennedy assassination. Let's go to your calls and thoughts here. we got Harry. He's on the line in South Carolina. Harry, you're on. On Free Talk Live. Go ahead. Oops, sorry about that. Good afternoon. Good evening, guys. Yes, welcome. Uh, listening to your show down in Charleston, and uh, wanted to tell you, I'm on city council down here. We we have a mask mandate, if we can uh, just change the tune here just for a second. Sure. This mask mandate, uh, we, we put it in place back in July of last year, and uh, there's 13 members of council, including the mayor. The vote was 12 to 1. I was the only person that voted against it wow. because I felt that it was unconstitutional. Thank um, you for your service on that. <laughs> thank you guys for your service. I want to just tell you a little bit about this mass mandate if I can. Please do. There is three levels of infraction. You know, you, if you get your first offense, you get fined $100. Mm-hmm. If you get it caught a second time, it's $200. If you get found guilty a third time, it's $500. Wow. 
Is this now businesses? They can, also, they, can, they, can, they can also get the businesses. And basically, if somebody's within a business and they don't have a mask, then the business gets the fine as well. Now, has this now, actually been being enforced? Are the police writing out these tickets? No, that's the thing. Here, here, let me explain this to you. Okay. The police department has the authority to write these tickets, but they're not doing it. Who's okay. enforcing it is this livability department that we have down here in Charleston. Oh, they're no. basically the HOA of the city. And so they go around. They're not law enforcement, and, and, that, and that they're not sworn. They've never been to an academy, but they've got a ticket book, mm. and they can go up and basically harass individuals. Now, we have a bunch of exemptions, like medical exemptions, for one. Mm -hmm. And what they're doing is they're going up to these people with medical exemptions. They're harassing them and accosting them, trying to get them to show them their medical exemption, which I think is totally illegal. Don't you guys think that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, HIPAA is the law you want to work up. Look, uh, look up. I'm not, I'm not so, so sure about that. So, but. Well, they're going up to people and trying to tell them that they have to show them their medical exemption which I'm under the impression that, number one, this isn't even an actual police officer. This is a basically a department made up by the city in order to collect revenue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there probably and, would have to be a specific law on it in order to, like like a, a driver's license. You know, in a specific case of a driver's license, you might have to show your ID, but if the person's not being licensed and we're not being licensed, I presume mm -hmm. that you wouldn't have no reason to be obligated to yeah. show anything. You don't even, I mean, right. my response would be, I'll turn around and show you my vertical smile, but that's all you're going <laughs> to see. I mean, what <laughs> obligation do you have to even respond to these people? Well, what they do is they threaten police intervention if you don't, if you walk away. Or so, an example and is there a was bluff. a lady with a couple of kids, and she was she was in in a grocery store, and they came up to her and they said, "Ma'am, you have to wear a mask." She said, "Well, I have a medical exemption," and they basically said, "Show me," and she said, "No, I'm not going to do that." And then they said, "Well, give me your license," and they said, "She said, no, I'm not going to do that. You're not a police officer. Mm -hmm. I don't have to give you my license." And they said, "Well, we'll just go get the police." And so what we're doing in Charleston is... Wait, wait, hold on, hold know, on. Before, you, before you go on with the old lady, what did she do when they said we're going to get the police? Did she crack and then show them her ID, or did she no, stand firm? No, absolutely, absolutely not. She called her right. attorney, and her attorney told her, do not. You don't, have to, you don't have to listen to these people. You know, you have a medical exemption, and your medical rights are between you and your doctor. That's not right. Just, they don't have the right to look at a... a some sort of document that your doctor no, provided. They, you know they, I mean? can, they can ask. Anybody mm -hmm. can ask, right? Like, I can go up to you on the street and say, excuse me, I'd like to see your you know, medical papers from your doctor. And if you feel like showing them to me, you can do that. I can ask you for anything I want. And you have a right to say no to anything that I ask you for. You know, no. I'm, and, and you know, I don't believe that people should be showing their information to the police either. But under the system, yeah. uh, the police can demand certain information there's, from you. There's they only have to have a reasonable, articulable suspicion right. that you've mm -hmm. committed a crime. Right. That's a standard for can a Terry I, can, I, can I give you guys one more example sure. real quick? I know you got to go. No, please. This local business owner, you know, runs a, runs a restaurant, obviously hit hard by the pandemic, opens back up. Good business, you know, gives a, a huge discount to law enforcement because he's just a good local business owner. He goes up, his business opens up at 11 o'clock. Um, it's a restaurant, and he goes and parks his car, leaves his car running, runs into his office to open up the cash register or whatever for the day, and then he goes to walk out of his office. He's got two livability officers waiting on him to write him a citation mm -hmm. for over $1,000. Now he's fighting that to the full extent of the law. He's got Good. he's got an attorney, and he's going to go to court over it. But what are we doing, guys? I mean, this is ridiculous. Well, what I want to know, I mean, obviously you've met and interacted with the other people on the city council. What do they just not care that they're you know trashing people's lives when they can't even work? Do they do they just have no souls, or what's wrong with them? I think that they're just afraid of the virus. I think that there's a lot of people that live with fear of this virus. Mm -hmm. But as you guys have pointed out, I mean, you've got over a 99% uh, survival rate, no matter what your age is. I got so, I mean, we're dangerous. just letting this virus beat us left and right. Harry, thanks for the, uh, the inside scoop there. Feel free to let us know what's happening uh, in the city council there in South Carolina in the future. I appreciate your call. There's more coming up.
I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you to go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. Who do you think Excuse you are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make. Wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Because you're scared of property. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimespree.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on joined the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. When you amp Free Talk Live, you get perks like access to the AMP-only Facebook group and AMP podcast. Visit amp.freetalklive.com. Bitcoin.com has launched a trading platform at local.bitcoin.com, allowing you to buy or sell Bitcoin cash via dozens of payment methods like PayPal, Venmo, bank deposit, remittances, or meeting in person with cash. There are no ID requirements to sign up for and use the site, and all communications between buyers and sellers are encrypted. Finally, a global trading platform that respects your privacy. Visit local.bitcoin.com to get started trading Bitcoin cash. Local.bitcoin.com There are lots of ways to listen to Free Talk Live. Our podcast has been around since podcasts began, and now the FTL feed is loaded with content besides our full show archives. Did you know that we make it easy for you to customize your podcast subscriptions? We have different feeds, one that includes only our full shows, one with just the Daily Digest, and our main feed that includes everything. You decide what you listen to. It's quick and easy to customize your feeds at feeds.freetalklive.com. That's feeds.freetalklive.com. I'm grateful to have heard from some of our satellite listeners recently. I appreciate knowing that people are out there who like what we do and are willing to support it financially. LRN.FM's free-to-air satellite feeds blanket most of two continents. It was my goal to put our channel there so people without internet could receive our programs and feed pirate radio stations. We started a fundraiser on Patreon a few years ago to back the satellite channels. I recently announced that I was considering canceling the feeds and donations increased from 15 to 20 percent of our costs, which are around $1,000 per month. That's a good start, and to incentivize more contributions, the Shire Free Church will be matching every dollar. Can we reach $500 per month? With your help, we can. You can join our satellite fundraiser for just $2 a month at fund.lrn.fm. If we raise enough to keep both of the channels on the air, awesome. If we raise more, I'll add more channels. If not, we can shut them down and go internet only. It's up to you. Thank you for your support. FUND.LRN.FM Do you appreciate what we do? Help us advertise, market, and promote for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com It is Free Talk Live, and you can join us here. The number is 603-283-6160. That's 603-283-6160. And don't forget, you can join us coming up this summer. Second week of summer, June 28th through July 4th at ForkFest 2021. You want to mark your calendars for this now and do more than mark your calendar. Call Rogers Campground or go to their website and book your RV site, your campsite, or motel room 
for June 28th through July 4th and join us for ForkFest, the fifth annual ForkFest. And it is a decentralized libertarian camping festival. If you love the idea of freedom and you want to be with other people that actually agree with you, then there's going to likely be hundreds of them at ForkFest 2021. We're seeing new people showing up in the ForkFest Telegram chat room who we've never seen before saying they're coming to ForkFest this year. So there's definitely going to be some new faces there, and I'm looking forward to that. I think it's going to, it could be the biggest year. It's going to be a fest. great forking time. Yeah. I think a lot of people are really bummed out by all these COVID crackdowns going on, and they're going to be looking for something to do this summer. It was bad last summer because there was nothing to do. Now it's been a whole year almost yep. since that time. And so you have had absolutely nothing to do in most places. There's no more musical events. There's no more uh, plays. There's no more anything that you can go out and do except for come to ForkFest in the summer of 2021. So uh, come on out and join us. Go to ForkFest.Party. Learn more about the event there. Uh, that's ForkFest.Party, June 28th through July 4th. Are you going this year, Chris? Absolutely. All right, cool. Five years in a row, right? Oh, wait, did Every you single one? one? Did, no, I've wasn't been there. there one where you I'm... came back from like a party and you were... You I was late. I was late. I, late. I, okay. I did not go at all. I mean, <laughs> you made it though. Yeah, it, yeah, though. yeah. It wasn't yeah. a party. It was a convention, right? Back when they had conventions. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It was a. I, I went to the. Convention. Flew from the convention basically straight to Fork Fest. You won't have any for, conflicts this year. I right bet. up to the event. Yeah. Yeah. There's nowhere nope. else to go. No conflicts this year. <laughs> I can be pretty confident of that. Forkfest dot party. Go check that out. So, since our caller brought up the masks, I've got a sad story to tell of a Texas boy, age 12, who hung himself recently. Why? Well, because he was lonely and sad, according to the New York Post. Amid the coronavirus lockdown measures, he hung himself. The 12-year-old Texas boy, Hayden Hunstable, his father revealed in a report about the tragedy. He's from the town of Aledo, Texas. He took his life three days before his 13th birthday in April of 2020 because he didn't know how to deal with the isolation and depression with the emerging disease causing a nationwide shutdown. Of course, it wasn't the disease that caused it. It was the government that did. Now, it's interesting that this story is just coming out, uh, and it's been almost a year since his suicide. Uh, The boy's nine-year-old sister found him hung in his bedroom, according to the outlet Hayden's heartbroken dad, who is 42 years old, spoke to Metro to help prevent future suicides among the nation's youth. Quote, COVID killed my son. No, uh, well, no it didn't. No, the it government didn't. did. Yeah, I, I think Hayden would still be alive today if COVID had never happened. The father of three told the outlet, saying further, I had no idea he was struggling or depressed. He was such a happy kid and loved his friends and family. <laughs> Maybe you should have taken the mask off and looked at his face. Mm. Calling the pandemic a, quote, perfect storm for suicide and depression, his dad said, I think everything just got on top of him. He felt overwhelmed, and he made a tragic decision. And on April 17th, the water went out in the family's home. Brad's father came over, and Hayden helped them fix the problem. He said it was a beautiful sunny day, and I gave him a hug and kiss on the head. Then when my dad left, it was just me, Kinley, and Hayden at home. There was only a 30-minute window, and Hayden had gone upstairs Then my daughter ran downstairs and said Hayden has hung himself. I ran up there, pulled him down, and tried to save him. Tried to perform CPR, but couldn't save him. He was gone. I saw something horrific that day, and I don't wish it upon anybody. I still get nightmares about it. Well, here's the best thing you can do if you're a parent uh, who's got a kid in this situation. Let your kids go outside. Let your kids get together with other kids and, you know, go out and play and do things that kids do together. Uh, and and try to find a group of parents that's not a bunch of pussies, where yeah. you can actually get together with people who are willing to go out and you do know, things together. I, because <laughs> even if you're increasing, you know, the level of danger for your parents, think about it. Would your parents rather die or have your I, children I, die? I feel like would, we're living would in they a trade their lives for their children. I feel like we're living in a little bubble here in Keene, New Hampshire, just because I. No, that's a possibility for most parents in other places. They're just so infatuated with, 
you know, COVID-19. There are, there has to be anti-mask people in a lot of places. Maybe there not are. New York City, but, you know, places where it's not as urban, you know, there's a good chance that there's going to be an anti-mask group or a pro-freedom There's, there's anti-maskers in uh, in New York City. They're just scared to go out without <laughs> one or they'll get lynched because <laughs> right. New York City people are idiots. So that's number one. If you're living in a place like New York City... <laughs> or a, a very urban center like that, Philadelphia, for instance, you should get the hell out of there as soon as you possibly can. Thank you. Okay, that's priority number one. Get out of these little tyrant places like this mm -hmm. and go to a place that is less insane and then find other people, like maybe go to Freedom uh, Freedom Cells. Mm -hmm. Freedom, was it freedomcells.com? Uh, yeah, go to freedomcells.org. Dot org. Okay. Go to yeah. peoplesrights.org. Those yeah. are two... Uh, sites that'll help put you together with other people who don't necessarily take the media's word for everything. Right. And these are a lot of liberty-friendly folks. They won't all agree on everything, but it is a starting point for you to find people who you can actually get along with that actually yeah. aren't going to snitch you out to the government uh, for trying to live your life the way that you want to live it. And, you know, of course, your best bet if you're a liberty-minded person is to get to New Hampshire uh, actually, yes. we just had the... Uh, Let's be more than liberty-minded. If you're libertarian, sure. are you willing to, you know, are, are you willing to take that word with you to, to New Hampshire? Yeah, you, what is a libertarian? Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I define libertarian uh, pretty much the same way the world the world's smallest political quiz does. So basically, I, I, I take it as like 20% of the uh, of the area of the political spectrum, the world's smallest qu political quiz is laid out at a, as a diamond, and uh, there are four sections in the corner for liberal, conservative, libertarian, and authoritarian, and there's one square carved out in the center for centrist. So each one's about twenty mm -hmm. percent. I say the most libertarian twenty percent are what I would call libertarian. So, again, freedomcells.org, peoplesrights.org. These are two organizations that have cells around the country that you can join and connect with other people, at least in your region or your state, that have similar beliefs. And, you know, do what it takes to get out there and get together with people because that it is absolutely a depressing factor for any human being who's not a psychopath to not be able to talk with other people, to not be able to see the smiles on the faces of other people. We are being stripped of our humanity by these mask mandates that literally mm. wipe people's faces away. You cannot see the expressions that people are making. You don't know if somebody is smiling or making a menacing face or whatever. It's really hard to tell mm. if all you have to go by is the person's eyes. Yeah, absolutely. It's... Uh... I mean, I've I'm in like pers almost perfect isolation here, and it's driving me crazy. Well, you don't have to be. I mean, you can go I mean, out. We have multiple meetups choice. every single yeah. week, man. If you're not going it's out, true. it's because you're not yeah, paying that's attention. That's all you. Well, I okay. It's it's true. I do I do have place places yeah. to go. It's just uh, you know, I don't. Like I, I just I need some fresh blood in my life because you can't as you easily know. go to a bar. Yeah, right. I can't, can't go to a bar. Like I can't that. go to some place where I'm going to meet a girl. And, you know, part of it is I just need to find some poor girl and throw her around a hotel room for a couple of days. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's one of the more depressing aspects of the, uh, the masks is you can't even see a pretty girl on the streets anymore. Yeah. It's just not an option. Yeah. Uh, so the only people who, but who benefit are the butterfaces. Yeah. 603-283-6160. That's 603-283-6160. You want to comment on helping people deal with depression from not being able to actually socialize. Kids are killing themselves. I'm sure adults are as well. That just doesn't make the news as often. It's Free Talk Live. More coming up. You can share your thoughts. The Free State Project has reached its goal of 20,000 liberty lovers who've pledged to move to New Hampshire and get active to achieve liberty in our lifetime. Perhaps you're trying to figure out what part of New Hampshire should be your destination. If so, consider Keene. 
you'll find more than 150 reasons to move to Keene at move.freekeen.com. Keene is famous for its historic, publicity-generating activism, as well as being the liberty media capital of the world. It's home to freekeen.com, New Hampshire's destination for liberty activism, news, and opinion. For years, we've been compiling over 150 reasons to move to Keene at move.freekeen.com, where you'll learn about some of what's happening here and what makes Keene a great place to live. If you love liberty, you'll probably enjoy anywhere you end up in the Shire. But do your due diligence first. Please visit move.freekeen.com for the full list of over 150 reasons to move to Keen. That's move.freekeen.com. Is oral health important to you? If you don't like your own teeth, fresh breath, or kissing people, then by all means, stop listening. Several years ago, I met Jessica Armand, founder and CEO of My Magic Mud, and I became passionate about the product that she created and never want to live without it. It's clinically proven to whiten teeth, but I find it does much more. They want you to love My Magic Mud as much as I do, so they're giving you a money-back guarantee plus 20% off. Go to MyMagicMud.com and use coupon code FTL20 at checkout. MyMagicMud.com, FTL20. What if you want to hear the latest episode of Free Talk Live, but all you have is your phone, you forgot to download our archive, and you have no data connection? You can call our Listen Line at 641-793-0191. That's a long-distance number, so you may incur charges. If not, listen as long as you want. 641-793-0191. The Free Talk Live Listen Line, 641-793-0191. This is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends. I've run websites since 1996 and have used over a dozen web hosts in that time. AgoristHosting.com is the only one that hasn't broken my heart. Agrist Hosting's uptime and service is stellar, and their DDoS mitigation is the best I've seen. That's important because if you tell the truth in this world, you'll ruffle feathers. And some people will try dirty tricks to silence your voice. No matter what the haters hit us with, Agorist Hosting keeps our websites online. If you have a mission-critical commercial presence or a world-changing activism site, you cannot tolerate any skullduggery. So go with agoristhosting.com. Have a WordPress or blog site, but you're not satisfied with performance or uptime? Or just want raw hosting? Want to pay with Bitcoin? Agris Hosting specializes in high-performance hosting with personalized service. Go to agoristhosting.com and click on the button that says Get Hosted. That's agoristhosting.com. Tired of cancel culture? Sick of mega tech corporations holding an axe over your head? Join the LRN.FM Matrix chat server. It's self-hosted, so no one else can tell us what to do or say. Don't like the existing channels? You can make your own. You can even connect into some of our channels from other Matrix servers. It's federated. For the full LRN.FM Matrix experience, though, you should join our server via the step-by-step instructions at chat.lrn.fm. Chat.lrn.fm. There are basically two types of advertising, direct response and branding. Radio is great for direct response with its low cost to listener ratio, but audio can't be beat for branding, which is a longer term endeavor. You want to be the first thing that someone thinks of when they think about your product or service. If you have a local business that you want kept top of mind in your community, call the station. If you need national reach, Free Talk Live's got around 200 radio stations, millions of monthly listening sessions, can suit all budgets, and if we don't think we're right for you, we'll tell you. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Our Matrix server is about as free as internet chat can be. Join the existing rooms or create your own at chat.freetalklive.com. is free talk live welcome to the show as always you're welcome to join us the number 603-283-6160 that's 603-283-6160 and in the studio tonight you've got ian nobody and chris we're going to continue here of course your calls and thoughts are welcome one of the ways you can call in we gave you the phone number that's the old method the new fangled method is through the Matrix chat server, which you can join uh, by going to uh, go to chat.freetalklive.com. That'll give you the step-by-step instructions that you need to join our Matrix chat server, and it'll also tell you how to call in through that chat server. 
The way we do it is through a, sort of a plug-in called Jitsi, and it works great. It sounds fantastic, and that's where we're going next with the Reverend Rat Speed calling from Nevada. You're on Free Talk Live. Go ahead. What kind hey, of guys? Oh, what kind oh, of sorry, speed do rats do, bro? Do they do just meth like the rest <clears throat> of us, or? <laughs> the most effective kind possible, of course. Okay. <laughs> good plan. Good plan. Long you gotta be a fat rat, fast that. rat if you're in the rat race. Go ahead. There's a long story behind that name. It used to be my steampunk name and somehow it caught on. Hmm. Anyway, I just wanted to mention real quick, since you guys mentioned uh, freedomcells.org, uh, it's actually .net. I just looked uh -oh. it up. Oh, and right. thank I'm, you. Really? You're welcome. And I, yes, and I tried to register and it said that a referral code is required. So that's just something I wanted to mention. There's a huh. referral code as, Weird. as I, part of, yeah. I just went yeah. to freedomcells.org and it appears to be the real site. Is oh. it? I wonder if freedomcells.net is like a uh, something somebody else put up to deter people. I don't know. These are totally uh, well, different looking websites. So freedomcells.net, oh, oh, okay. I don't know what that is. It's talking okay, about mind, uh, collective transformation, collective power, blockchain, crowdfunding, decentralization, free speech. It sounds like there might be some overlap there, but if you go to freedomcells.org, <laughs> uh, you'll see if you scroll down to the bottom, there's names that we recognize, like John Bush and Derek Bros. So that's the one oh, you okay. want. Uh, it's under the Bipcot No Gov Media License. So definitely those are our people yeah. at uh, freedomcells.org. Sorry, go ahead with All your right. point. Sorry. Got confused about that. Anyway, I, well, I was originally going to uh, call and uh, ask about uh, something that I saw regarding uh, Jeffrey Kaufman's remarks that uh, were uploaded at uh, uh, on Freaking. You mean Jeremy uh, the, Kaufman from Library? Jeremy? And Free State Project? Sorry, I, yes. Okay, yeah. Jeremy Kaufman. Sorry, mm -hmm. I don't know the guy. Um, he mentioned a couple of pr proposals, and I wanted to ask about those. But first, real quick, about the... the, the uh, uh, the no secret evidence ruling. I thought that was really great. Mm -hmm. I thought, hey, wouldn't it be better to actually put a constitutional amendment that says that so that all software used by state government actors mm -hmm. has to be open source and viewable by the public? Because mm -hmm. essentially, a source code is a way of making law. It's a it's it's the laws mm -hmm. by which software uh, processes work. In so I would figure, you know. In the case of, of this, I think they found that there is a constitutional amendment that re that requires almost that. At least they it requires that the defendant have access to the so, source code. And that's the Eighth Amendment, which uh, guarantees due process of law. So um, well it's then, what about all due of this process of law if you can't see it? But what about all of the proprietary software that's running these voting machines? Mm -hmm. I mean, every yeah. single state government's using that, and that would be against the, the Eighth Amendment then. Um, I, but isn't due process relating to criminal? Not, I don't know if that would be necessarily Yeah, due process to... is limited to criminal. I wasn't yeah. thinking about things like voting machines. And you're right. These voting machines, I mean, they've got 10-year-old kids who hack them in 10 minutes. So, <laughs> you know. Right. Um, well, you make an interesting proposal, although I don't know if you're going to see very many uh, rep state representatives taking it up. If you were here in New Hampshire, you could make the proposal as a state rep if you won election. Interestingly, <laughs> I, interestingly there has actually been a, uh, a law that was passed, and they're supposed to – the law does something like require them to consider open source software in New Hampshire, so there is a law hmm. like that. Now – Question, the big question is, it doesn't has require anybody them to choose it? Though. Has, it just requires it, right. them to yep, yep, consider yep. it. But That's the question is, enough. has anybody actually ever considered it? Even because just because it's law doesn't necessarily doesn't mean anybody's following follow it. it, right? Yeah, and that's the other problem. And there's almost never a punishment for a government right. bureaucrat who exactly. doesn't follow exactly. the law, and they know how to get around it too. Right. So it well, yeah. there is if you've got enough tar and feathers. Mm. <laughs> so uh, about the thing about Jeremy Kaufman, I wanted to ask. Um, so he was proposing, and he said he was a bit dubious about it, but he was saying that people that are free staters, quote unquote, are essentially libertarians that are already present in New Hampshire. Yeah, let me give a well, little bit of context if, for what you're saying here. Uh, Jeremy yeah. Kaufman gave a speech at the Porcupine Day event, which I was at, I recorded the video you're referring to. None of my co-hosts uh, were there, and I'm sure almost none of our listeners were there. I doubt many of them have seen this video at this point. So Porcupine Day, for those that don't know, is the day in 2016 
on which the Free State Project reached its 20,000 members. Now, the Free State Project is the idea of migrating libertarian types to New Hampshire, activist libertarians to New Hampshire. That's the reason why the three of us are in the studio tonight. We Absolutely. all came here because of the, the Free State Project. And, uh, and it, you know, it's, it's, it reached 20,000 people who signed the pledge. And that pledge was to make the move within a five-year window of time once the 20,000 was reached. Well, the 20,000 was reached in February of 2016. It has now been five years since that time. It is now wow. February of 2021. And so to Porcupine Day is that celebration of, hey, this was the day we made this, this goal, and now the five-year window is closed. So it was the sort of the final Porcupine Day uh, celebration of that. And so Jeremy gave a speech as the opening speaker at this Porcupine Day event that happened this last weekend. And that's what you're referring to. But the border is not closed. So if you're a libertarian, you're still welcome to come. Oh, and if first. you're not a libertarian, you're still welcome to leave. Yeah, exactly. it, the libertarians, <laughs> the migration movement to New Hampshire, free staters, it's it, it turned, uh, you know, the basically New Hampshire's motto, live free or die, into something legitimate. And, yeah, and it's yeah. still going, I, and, yeah. and that is, was an important point. I there was a time when I thought the Free State Project should shut down once it reached its twenty thousand and finished its its original goal. But I was actually convinced by some of the speeches at this event that the Free State Project should continue and should continue because they're they're having their best years. The 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 biggest mover year was twenty twenty. This is the time where people need to hear about this more than ever. Yeah. It's more important than it's ever been yeah. for people who care about freedom to actually pick up their lives and move for it. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it matters so much, you know, what, you know, I, I think having more organizations, having more people doing more things, you know, the better. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, because it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't just magically, just because we even, right, we don't have 20,000, but just assuming that we did have 20,000 today or as of that speech, yeah. um, it wouldn't matter. We, we still need more people. We, we still want more, yeah. more people because the more people 000, we have, 50, the more 000. we can do, the more we can accomplish. Right. And um, we've accomplished a lot in, you know, with 2,000 people, we've accomplished we have, a ton. Right. We have almost yeah. nothing in terms of population we, and we've God, still accomplished a lot. 2000. So, yeah, there's probably between two and three thousand people who've moved, but we don't know how many people who've left. There's a couple and thousand. There's a couple uh, friends thousand of the others. free state as well. Yeah, there's so, a couple yeah. thousand people who are sort of from New Hampshire that signed up as well. We don't know how so, many people have showed up and not said anything. Though, there's a lot of them too. Yeah, you know, there there yeah. are a few paranoids among <laughs> libertarians. Oh, uh, more than a few. Captain <laughs> Kickass and Ari might not. Uh, yeah. might not. Two, of our hosts, two of our here. co-hosts uh, did not join the Free State Project. So I mean, there's uh, there's a large if, number of those. If I may ask my question real quick before, sure. before I, I'm sorry. Uh, so the first question that I had in my head when he was talking about libertarians who already live here, that would be the definition of a free stater, then doesn't that kind of limit it down to whatever subjective definition we call libertarian? What about the anarchists? What about the anarcho capitalists? Or it, it, it kind of it was a little bit concerning to me because it kind of it's it's not, I mean, obviously, you know, we want people to live by a certain principle, the non-aggression principle, whatnot. But how do you start limiting down the definition of who is free and who isn't other than the person's actions rather than a pledge or a label? That's that was yeah. the thing that was concerning I think you're me. overthinking it. I mean he was just basically proposing that instead of defining the term free stater as someone who has migrated to New Hampshire or joined the Free State Project in some official capacity, that it would generally Ooh. mean anyone who's a liberta libertarian within New Hampshire. I think most people would consider anarchists voluntarists also. Anybody under that who label. subscribes to the NAP effectively the who moved principle? to New Hampshire is yeah. a free stater, regardless of the Free State well, Project. No, he was talk, what his proposal was was that the, the term be changed from being someone who has joined the Free State Project to anyone who's a liberty-minded person in New Hampshire. I would have so already to, considered see, anybody so who's to moved expand to it. New Hampshire as, as We're not just talking that. about people who've moved. Yeah. We're talking about people who live here in New Hampshire. Oh, so be natives, include okay. the pre-staters. Okay. Yeah, so I, be, which hurts. Yeah, some, it, I mean, it does hurt some of the pre pre staters' feelings that they're they they they're not considered like one of us because they were already here. Oh, I would not Capuzzo consider them not one of us. Irritated, they're still that, they're but, still one of uh, us. I certainly see them as they're still porks. Whether yeah, you want yeah. to call them free staters. I think it's or not. fine what he's what he's saying here to expand the definition. And thank you, uh, Rat Speed. I yeah. appreciate it. Uh, there's more coming up here, and you can share your thoughts with us. 603 283 6160. You can join us on Free Talk Live. 
Having taken her father's throne, Sarah Calhoun has fallen out with one of her best allies, and her brother Nathaniel heads into Imperial Philadelphia with a reckless plan. Her uncle Thomas, armed with new powers and new allies, aims to remove Sarah from her throne and from the world of the living. To survive and to gain the strength she needs to fight an impossible war, Sarah must unite the Mound Builder Kings to enact an ancient rite that will propel her beyond mortality. Servant Daughter by T.J. Butler is the newest entry in the Dragon Award-winning Witchy War series from Bane Books at BaneBooks.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you're helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at Bitcoin.com. That's Bitcoin.com. Looking for a great real estate investment? Consider New Hampshire, which is ground zero for the Liberty Movement. Your first call should be to Mark Warden from Porcupine Real Estate. He's more than just a real estate agent. He's your New Hampshire concierge. Where are the best places to live? Do you want farm, city, the burbs, or forest? Do you want a duplex or multifamily building so that renters pay your mortgage? There are homes in all price ranges in New Hampshire, and Mark can help with financing too. Invest in Liberty and property. Mark Warden can help. PorcupineRealEstate.com some of you asked, and now we've delivered. LRN.FM's live Keen New Hampshire studio shows are now streamed in HD on Twitch. Visit our channel at twitch.lrn.fm and give it a follow. If you have Amazon Prime, you get one free subscription on Twitch. If you use it on our channel, Twitch will give LRN.FM a monthly piece of your Prime subscription cost. So please watch, follow, share, and subscribe to twitch.lrn.fm. That's twitch.lrn.fm. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Day four, I'm Mary Corsetti, Fox News. In the impeachment trial of former President Trump, House managers wrapped up their arguments yesterday, and today it was the defense team's turn to share its side. Attorneys for former President Trump used just about two and a half hours to dismiss the article of incitement of insurrection as politically motivated, unconstitutional, and hypocritical. This trial is about far more than President Trump. It is about silencing and banning the speech the majority does not agree with. Bruce Castor and Trump's legal team played video montages showing Democrats using fiery political rhetoric, urging supporters to fight and raising concerns about previous presidential elections. They also argue rioters who breached the Capitol hijacked the peaceful event for their own agendas. Jared Halpern, Fox News. Meanwhile, the CEOs of several major airlines met Friday with the White House's coronavirus response coordinator to lobby against requiring coronavirus testing of passengers on domestic flights. They say it would only further undermine air travel. A person familiar with the discussions says Biden's administration isn't currently planning to impose a testing requirement. Plus, the staff of New York Governor Andrew Cuomo is responding after reportedly apologizing privately to fellow Democrats for concealing the true number of nursing home patients who died due to COVID-19. The New York Post published details of a video chat between Melissa De Rosa, Governor Andrew Cuomo's secretary, and top New York State Democratic officeholders, in which De Rosa admits they didn't include COVID-19 deaths of nursing home patients in hospitals among the tally of nursing home deaths due to the virus. And she offers an apology to them for creating a difficult campaign issue. In a statement now tweeted by an aide, DeRosa claims Cuomo and his team were transparent, but they were forced to deal with a Trump administration Justice Department inquiry before answering questions from the New York legislature. Fox's Evan Brown. America is listening to Fox News. A warning. Why are you still going to the post office? Do it all online with Stamps.com. Avoid trips to the post office, print postage, send invoices, letters, or packages, and schedule pickups right from your home or office 24-7. Get close to 10% off first-class stamps, up to 40% off priority mail, and up to 62% off UPS shipping rates. Go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone, and enter code FOX for a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. Stamps.com, code FOX. In South Texas, ahead of an Arctic blast. Time is running out to prepare. That message from Harris County Executive Judge Lena Hidalgo. Ahead of a bitter cold front that's bringing with it freezing temps, wind, and ice through next week in Houston and across the South. If the models are right, 
We're about to see an incident the likes of which we have not seen in 30 years. A very high probability of power outages, dangerous conditions outside, road closures. The Arctic system also expected to hit Oklahoma with heavy snow later this weekend, where the state patrol is urging people to stay home. The Oklahoma National Guard also on standby in case of weather-related emergencies. Jeff Manasso, Fox News. Meanwhile, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention say in-person schooling can be done safely with mask use, social distancing, and other strategies. In a report released Friday, the CDC says vaccination of teachers, while important, is not a prerequisite for reopening. It comes after months of sparring between school districts and teachers with the union demanding they be vaccinated before returning to in-person learning. Also new tonight, after some COVID-related confusion, the Brooklyn Nets have one of their star players back. Kevin Durant was cleared to return to practice Friday after spending six days in the NBA's COVID-19 protocols over contact tracing concerns. This stems from February 5th when the Brooklyn Nets forward was originally held out of the team's starting lineup against the Toronto Raptors due to COVID-related issues, then allowed to enter the game only... We have some good news. The indictments against Ross Albrecht in the District of Maryland were dismissed with prejudice, meaning they can never be refiled. This is especially good because those indictments contain the only charge ever made that Ross engaged in murder for hire. This was a serious allegation that Ross Ulbricht denies. It was never prosecuted or ruled on by a jury, but was trumpeted by the federal government and the media as if it were proven fact. The Maryland court held these indictments for almost five years, poisoning Ross's case and leaving him under a cloud of unproven allegations. As explained in Ross's appeal to the Supreme Court, the fact that the judge used these allegations to give Ross a draconian sentence of double life without parole violated his Sixth Amendment right to a jury trial. Judges are required to issue sentences based on convictions decided by a jury, not unproven allegations, never even charged at trial. Although this is a positive development, the dropped indictment will not set Ross free. Now, a presidential pardon is Ross's only hope of freedom. Sign the petition at FreeRoss.org. FreeRoss.org. It was on this day in 1982 that the first roller skating while carrying a boombox member of Congress was elected when James Sugar Boots Franklin narrowly won New York's 8th congressional seat. Franklin's victory was a watershed moment at the time, signaling that America's burgeoning population of boombox carrying roller skaters had finally gained mainstream acceptance. We prove Congress isn't just for suits and crew cuts. Say hello to the slickest legislator on eight wheels. James Sugar Boots Franklin. Franklin was an unlikely pioneer, a street-smart skater who admitted to being more concerned with impressing honeys with his silky smooth moves than with politics. Franklin began organizing boombox-carrying roller skaters, advocating for basic rights like roller skate accessible ramps in government buildings and protected street lanes where they could lay down cones for some sweet slaloming. Just because we like to roll it out and have a smooth, fluid style that cannot be denied doesn't mean we aren't Americans. is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. It is Free Talk Live. We're kicking off the second hour of the program here. As always, open phones if you want to join us. 603-283-6160. That's 603-283-6160. You can also call us on our Matrix chat server. Just go to chat.freetalklive.com. And that is where you will find various different chat rooms in which you can interact with other Free Talk Live listeners pretty much around the clock. Head over to chat.freetalklive.com to get interactive there. With you in the studio tonight, it's Ian. Nobody. And Chris. We go to your calls and thoughts. His name is Loco for Liberty, calling us from West Virginia. Loco, you're on Free Talk Live. Hi, guys. I just wanted to talk about the uh, fun in Wyndham with the anomalies that uh, were discovered in that recount. The fun in Wyndham? What is Wyndham? Yes. Yeah, I, I actually I posted a link on the uh, Shire Forum about this interview from uh, David Strange. He's a doctor in uh, Belmont County, I oh, guess. Where uh, is this? Uh, what, what county are you talking about? Where, what, where uh, well, are we? Wy- Wyndham is the township where town where it happened. Is this in uh, West Virginia? It, where? No, no, this in is New in Hampshire. New Hampshire. New Hampshire, I okay. mean, there's some voter fraud that's been discovered that's really amazing. Oh, really? What happened? Well, it's enough to, if, if you, uh, the, uh, 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 excuse me, uh, Wyndham, mm. the town of Wyndham is where it happened. Okay. Uh, but uh, well, basically, <laughs> it, it essentially means that the Democrats had a 7% bump. 
Okay, but what's the fraud? I, I don't know anything about this story. They did, they sure. did a recount. Come okay. on, you guys are in New Hampshire. You, uh, I, I know what he's talking about. This stuff. Okay. I'm in West Virginia. So, so, okay, so so the, the people on the radio don't know, though, at a minimum. So, I certainly don't know. Um, don't ba attention. Basically, what he's talking about is a story where in Windham... Uh, they they did a recount and they discovered that the, I thought the, I thought it was like six percent, but anyway, um, the, the they ended up being that the Republicans they they subtracted six percent of the like the Republican vote basically, um, so they didn't get counted. And this was just the the people that were counting and, the votes manually. They yeah, just, that's what they discovered, and mm -hmm. then it ended up applying to I guess I think all of the machines. Um, so across the board, like 6% of all the votes were not counted that were Republican. Wow. Is that, is that, is that what you uh, recall? Interesting how it's always, yeah, yeah. that uh, kind of thing is Dr. always Strange against the same does, party. Dr. Strange does a good job of, uh, explaining all this stuff in that link I posted, but, uh, essentially it was all on the federal level, but they, on, in Wyndham, they went down into one of the, uh, local, uh, house races and that was an anomaly, so it was caught. There was like three house races that were affected by it. Mm. But most of the anomalies are on the federal level. So if you can imagine a 6% bump on all the federal elections statewide, the, senator, the recent senator elections are wrong. Mm. Wow. Anybody in a close race is screwed. Yeah, well, well, are they, or can they still sue? Well, the, the uh, loser can sue. I mean, this is newly discovered evidence. I, I don't think that's the way it works. That, any deadline is that exp is you know that kind of works against it. Yeah, wow. I, I think there's. I think you have to. You have a certain amount of time to demand a manual count, and if you don't, then you then that's it. I mean, it's not like it matters anyway. Ultimately, whoever wins, we're going to get screwed over. Yeah. So for sure. I mean, I I get that everybody's really concerned with voter fraud, but I mean, these people are scumbags any way you shake it. That no doubt, no doubt about that. Yeah, I that. mean, I, I I think especially at the federal level, that's certainly true. I think yeah. it, it's a little bit less true in New Hampshire, but yeah, I mean. I, I think that we need to focus on fixing the problem and not worry about who it's favoring or disfavoring. Um, and that, that's really the issue. And, you know, the way we're counting these, you know, using machines is, is a problem. Yeah, so. hand counts. Mm -hmm. How about a blockchain? Vote on a bleeding blockchain. I'm all for it. Yeah, I, I don't think there's a, I don't think that's a terrible way to do it. I mean, I, I think at the end of the day, if, if you can compare your ticket that gets printed off to the screen and then go put that ticket into, you know, a system that counts it, but then it gets manually counted at the end. That's probably the best way to do it because then you can compare. Isn't that how everything. it works in most towns in New Hampshire? No, they don't manually count them from what I understand. That's the problem. They, when they do the recount, that's when they manually count them. Huh. So they're just trusting the machines and that's, that's very dangerous. And as it's been evidenced, and this is not something new, this has been something that's been talked about for, 20 something years now hmm. um these machines are you know these these non-mechanical machines are not uh not a good way to re reliably count votes loco anything else you want to share yeah i'd like to say that the uh state numbers don't line up for the federal numbers if you look at uh directions that new hampshire's going uh you know you look at the they have a Republican legislature, mm -hmm. and uh, and they flip the Senate, and they're voting for Biden. That doesn't compute to me. Well, yeah, that's the thing. You got to understand, New Hampshire's a weird place. Uh, well, it's they, not that they, weird. No, I it mean, is. It you is. You don't the go people vote here... for a Republican. Uh, Flips in but they do then, actually. You know, they do in New Hampshire. Not, to me, I've been watching these elections here for yeah. 15 years, and that didn't surprise me at all. It's mm -hmm. not the first time something like that has happened. And if well, you were we going don't to know engage actually in, how people vote, though, we only know what numbers are reported. I understand how that. How long has the fraud been going on? If you were going to engage in fraud, why wouldn't you engage it on top to bottom of the whole ballot? Why would you just focus on federal elections? If you're a fraud, you know, if your plan is to commit a felony. And go ahead and you know commit election fraud. Why not do it on every single uh, you know race? Why would can, you just? I can answer that. Yeah. Why? Because if you do it just on the federal level, the state people aren't coming after you. Yes, and I they think are. In Wyndham, they messed up and they tried to squeeze in something in Wyndham.
No, the state people will absolutely come after you. The attorney general's office is uh, over top of the entire election process. So, no, I think if you go listen to that Strange, Dr. Strange interview that I posted, he'll, he'll tell you differently. Okay, well, well he's wrong. The new, uh, if you're talking about the New, new Hampshire Attorney General, he yeah. has stated that he's yeah, not, no, not going to pursue this. Uh, Attorney General is apparently now on the Supreme Court, and there's like an assistant person in his place. Oh, well, that guy's a piece of garbage, but the Attorney General's office is in charge of the elections investigation. If there's an election fraud allegation, it's their job well, to investigate it. it. Now, whether they do it or not is another question. Yeah. So again, yeah, the point you can't is... Yeah, the government do anything. Huh. Uh, whether they're going to do it or not isn't doesn't matter. You don't know as a, for somebody who's going to commit fraud whether or not they're going to prosecute. So if you're willing to take the risk of committing a felony, then why don't you just go ahead and try it on every single uh, person on the ballot? Why wouldn't you? I mean, it's a felony any any way you slice I mean, it. Presumably, uh, if you if you don't do it, then the objective is presumably not to get caught because you want your your numbers to stick. Um, but. Mm -hmm. So and, and why also, would you, be, you know, well, it, it may well be you don't know what method is being used to cause these things to be uh, miscounted. It, maybe it's maybe it takes more time and energy to do it on all the races. Right. Maybe there was a limited window to operate. Yeah, yeah it, depending know. on what the bug that it's being exploited or exactly. any other You'd number of things. I could see that details. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't buy it. I've seen the New Hampshire people vote in this sort of cross purpose for many yeah, elections. I, I don't think I don't well, think you're for example, I don't think you're wrong, but I don't necessarily know that's the I mean, you're same both talking thing. at the same time. I'm sorry. Okay. What? Yeah, I don't I, I don't think you're I think you're looking at it from a different perspective and a kind of a different thing and I think you're right in that people will vote and like you'll I mean basically I think what you're saying is people will vote at, you know, uh, uh, I don't know, Democrat at the federal level and then vote at the state level um, you know, Republican, right? Like they're going to It happens be all the time right. here. And I don't think that's I don't think I don't I don't I, I think you're right about that, but yeah. I don't necessarily know that that necessarily means that this also isn't true i'm not saying that's that this isn't true but yeah. uh loco is saying that oh my god no one would ever do this and i'm telling him yeah, he's yes, wrong he's wrong people about in new hampshire mm -hmm. would do that there are people in new hampshire who voted for uh the governor here but also voted democrat for the state reps right so they just don't have you. You can't pre uh, prejudge what a New Hampshire voter is going to do based mm -hmm. on their uh, their political party. And you also have mm -hmm. to remember that they're the the plurality of New Hampshire voters here are what they call undeclared. So they're not even a member of the Republican or the Democrat parties. This is the bulk of the New Hampshire voters. They have no party affiliation. Well, the other thing is, was there's no reason to assume that such fraud as there was was based on party line. Maybe it was in favor of COVIDians, which would include the both the Democrats and the governor. Yeah. Thank you for the call tonight. I appreciate it. Uh, Loco for Liberty. The number here is 603-283-6160. That's 603-283-6160. This is Free Talk Live. Divi's been a pretty good investment for Free Talk Live. Their ad campaign started in September 2019, and from mid-March to mid-July, the value soared by 10 times. It's not too late. Divi's new wallet hasn't even released yet, and other things are happening that I can't even say on the radio. If you want to invest and potentially do well, go to DiviProject.org. I can tell you that FTL is deepening its partnership with the guys from DiviProject.org. Past performance is not an indication of future profit. DiviProject.org. D-I-V-I Project.org. Want to accept Bitcoin at your online store? There's a good chance you already have what you need. A WordPress using WooCommerce and a Bitcoin address. Now all you need to start taking Bitcoin payments on your website is the AnyPay app on your Android or iPhone. Just paste your Bitcoin address into AnyPay, then connect it to your website with our one-click plugin for WordPress. Now your website takes Bitcoin. Start to finish in 15 minutes or less with no complicated steps. Download AnyPay from the App Store today. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM.
What if the United States and the Soviet Union had fought on land, sea, air, and the astral plane, struggled for dominion across parallel dimensions or on the surface of the moon? What wonders would have been unveiled? What terrors would have haunted mankind from those dark and dismal dimensions? Come closer, peer through a glass darkly, and discover the horrifying alternative visions of World War III from some of today's greatest minds in science fiction, fantasy, and horror, Weird World War III. Available now from Bane Books at BaneBooks.com. Join liberty-minded voluntarists, anarchists, and libertarians from June 28th through July 4th for ForkFest 2021 at Rogers Campground in the beautiful White Mountains of New Hampshire. ForkFest happens the week after the Porcupine Freedom Festival, and ForkFest is decentralized, which means no one is in charge. That also means there's no ticket cost. Just reserve your camping, RV site, or motel room with Rogers Campground for June 28th through July 4th. Where better to celebrate Independence Day than around other freedom-loving activists in the Shire? You can relax and enjoy the camaraderie of like-minded people, or you can create whatever experience or event you'd like others to have. If you're planning an event for ForkFest, be sure to let others know in advance. You can connect with fellow ForkFesters via the unofficial Telegram chat or the ForkFest forum. Links to those are on the unofficial website, forkfest.party. Mark your calendar for June 28th through July 4th, 2021. We'll see you at ForkFest.Party. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com to receive our usually weekly news updates by email. Plus, we have a Twitter account at twitter.freetalklive.com, and you can follow us on the decentralized Mastodon platform at toot.freetalklive.com. So please follow us at toot.freetalklive.com and sign up for our emails at news.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at Bitcoin.com. That's Bitcoin.com. You can stick it to the man and big tech. Join our FTL social mastodon at social.freetalklive.com. This is Free Talk Live. The number here is 603-283-6160. That's 603-283-6160. You can also call in on our Matrix chat server. Go to chat.freetalklive.com and you can connect with us that way as well. I want to say thank you to Jenna Talia, who is a Free Talk Live Platinum <laughs> Amplifier. Jenna contributes at least 25 bucks a month to the AMP program. AMP stands for Advertise, Market, and Promote. That is a way for you to get behind what we do here on Free Talk Live to help us get this show on more radio stations around the country and to bring more internet listeners on board. If you like the ideas of freedom, you like us talking about them on the radio on over 190 radio stations coast to coast, then help us with the AMP program like Jenna Talia has done <laughs> get behind genitalia, genitalia. Uh, thanks for that jenna appreciate it you can go to amp.freetalklive.com to get signed up we go to your calls and your thoughts we go to mike in wisconsin up next here mike you're on free talk live hey, hey um i love the show thanks uh, so at work I uh, wear the face shield. Oh, man, that sucks. Yeah, it is way better than Do me a favor, Mike. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Just back off your phone by like a couple inches for me, would you? Yeah. Okay. So at work, um, I wear the face shield instead of a mask, and some of my coworkers get mad at me for it. Okay. Yeah. What kind of job is this? Oh, I solder. Okay. Um, so it's usually I a good wear, idea to wear a face shield if you're soldering. I mean, that's generally you want to put some goggles on uh, for that task. You don't want burning solder, molten solder ooh. flipping up into your eye sockets, for instance. Bad times. It happens. Yeah. But I, I wear this face shield and my coworker gets mad at me for yeah. not wearing a mask. Okay. 
I'm jealous of those who can conceal and carry and wear a gun instead of a mask. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, you guys were talking about this the other night um, about the the face masks. I hate those. Um, I just wear a face shield instead. And, uh, you know, some of my coworkers get mad at me for it. What do they but, say to you? Um, oh, because you should be wearing two masks. Oh, and geez. it's not good to not wear a mask because I wear it halfway up my face. And my breath just goes out into the open most of the time. Are these right. people normally cowardly? I mean, are oh, they yeah. like they they drive like fifteen miles an hour? They're lefties. And wow. yep, you were completely right. Hey, nobody. Um, you were talking about the other night a vow of poverty. Ah, when yes. you're coming to the Church of the Sacred Hand, invisible, uh, invisible hand. hand. Invisible hand, yeah. Tell me more about the vow of poverty. Well, basically, I took a vow of poverty, so I don't own anything. The church owns everything, and, you know, they take care of me. They keep they keep me eating, but, uh, you know, I, I, I don't own anything. And the nice thing about that is the government can't take anything away from me because I don't own it. Thank you, sir. There that you is- go, Mike. Thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. Good luck with those coworkers. It sounds just absolutely awful uh, to have to work with people like that. I'm sorry to hear that, and uh, thank you again for the call tonight. 603-283-6160. Dave Ridley is on the line from New Hampshire from RidleyReport.com. Dave, you're on Free Talk Live. You guys know Jason Gerhard, right? Yes, I know Jason, but I'm sure our listeners don't. Can you uh, give a brief recap of who he is? So he is one of the people who was involved in the Brown standoff. The Ed and Elaine Brown, the 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 tax protesters? There there was a standoff in Plainfield, New Hampshire, where um, a guy named Ed Brown and his wife Elaine Brown um, said that they didn't know any income tax on their house. Uh, they didn't believe that anyone owes income tax unless they just want to pay it. Uh, you mean property they, tax? They no, it was income tax. It didn't have to do with their house. It was just income tax oh, okay. in general. The it was feds, on their dental process. The feds stole their house from them as a result of this. <laughs> okay, but, gotcha. Uh, they were not paying federal income tax on whatever they were doing. Mm. Uh, she was a dentist yeah, and I mean. he was a and exterminator. They were, they, were, they were claiming that there's no law requiring you to pay income tax. Mm-hmm. And everything, so they they attracted a, a you know a fairly significant following back in the 2007 era, and they right. they held off the feds for about eight months. Yeah, and, then eventually uh, and they were had arrested. a great party there and, on their property too that I went to. Yeah, it was a good time. And they um, uh, anyway, one of the people who was arrested and charged, you know, got serious jail time along with them. There were just five five or six people that, mm-hmm. that got serious jail time total. And one of them was Jason Gerhard. And um, he, uh, when they took him out, you know, took him to prison and whatever, um, he insisted that when he got out recently, I guess about a year ago, he, he insisted uh, that he was homeless. So they had to release him back to New Hampshire because he wanted to be in New Hampshire still, even after all those years, because yeah. he liked what we were doing. Yep. So he's become a fairly active activist. and. Yeah, I think he's running for selectman or something in Northfield. That sounds right. And yeah. uh, he is, uh, I'm not sure exactly what he's running for, but, he, but he, uh, he's got a, um, but he's, what he's trying to do in the meantime is uh, get a warrant article. It only takes 25 registered voters in Northfield to get a warrant article on the ballot. And he's trying to get a warrant article uh, requiring selectmen oh, yeah. to get the IRS to answer questions about the voluntary nature of the income tax. Really? Interesting. Yeah. Cool. I had not heard that detail. I knew he was running. I didn't know I didn't know what the Warren article thing was about. That's great. Yeah, Jason has been a really killer activist. I mean, so mm-hmm. if the if the whole point of putting him in prison for 13 years was to strip away all of his uh caring about freedom or his motivation, it didn't do that at all. Made him he, angrier. He, <laughs> made, he, made him even more yeah, uh, the determined he, to uh, fight back. Yeah, I think it was like the day he got out of prison, he showed up at like a Free State Project oh, yeah. event or some sort of a anti-mask protest or something like that because he's been coming out to uh, the governor's protests out in front of the governor's house he's been yep. there to almost every single one of those um and he's been a real great organizing force the guy's a killer activist 
You know, some of the Brown supporters and Ed Brown himself, you know, were kind of nutty. They didn't seem real level-headed in all mm-hmm. cases. Um, but Jason is, uh, you know, I've watched him, uh, you know, in confrontations, I've interviewed him on my channel and okay. everything. And he's a really articulate, smart fellow. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad he's come back here. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah definitely. Me too. He's but good people. Where were they keeping him? So, do you know what, what federal prison was he in? Oh, I don't remember. I remember seeing a picture of him when he was in prison in the in the 2010 era, but I don't remember which part. He must he have been have really website, young when they the put way, him in there uh, because he's hard with Gerhard.com. Yeah, he's young today, so he must have been young <laughs> yeah. when he was really young when he went there because he was in prison for 13 years. So he must have just been like but, 18 or something like that when he first went in. Yeah, he was sort of like a peaceful libertarian version of Erica uh, Ulrika Meinhof because, you know, he he was Ooh. a journalist at least nominally when he went up there, and he kind of just got drawn into it. He came to believe in the people that he was covering. That's what happened to Ulrika Meinhof. Of course, she was a she was a bad guy, and he's a good guy. So. Uh, it's good to have him on our side. Dave, uh, people should check you out over at RidleyReport.com. Uh, you want to keep in the loop with some of the activism going on here in New Hampshire. Dave's reporting on some of it. It's hard to report on all of it, but he does the best he can at RidleyReport.com. Check him out. we got more Free Talk Live coming up. Room for you if you want to join us. 603-283-6160. It's Free Talk Live. Fans of the Tour de France will be disappointed to hear that the race has been put on hold for an indefinite amount of time, as many of the world's top cyclists are currently riding over to the creek to check out cool bugs. Our Chad Williams is live in Bergerac, France. Thanks, Rachel. Roads that should be full of bikers are empty this afternoon. Right now, the riders were supposed to be here, making the climb up the legendary Mont Venteau, but instead, they rode into the woods after German cyclist Andre Greipel heard that there were a bunch of stick bugs down at the creek, and then everybody wanted to go down there and throw rocks at them. That's when Dmitry Moraviev reportedly skinned his knee but didn't care, and Irish champion Nicholas Roach announced he saw this big weird frog with like an extra arm or something, but it was hard to tell because it hopped away too fast. Race officials have not put a time frame on when the event will pick up again. People keep saying that this is going to delay the race, but if I know these boys like I think I do, they're going to find some awesome shortcut through someone's backyard. This is the Onion News Network. Don't worry about things you can't control. Isn't that what they always say? But it's about impossible to avoid worrying about what's going on these days. The government has used the war on guns, the war on drugs, and the war on terrorism to tear our Bill of Rights to shreds. But you can't fight back. The Tenth Amendment Center has proven it, racking up major victories. For example, when the U.S. government claimed authority in the NDAA to have the military kidnap and detain Americans without trial, the nullifiers got a law passed in California, declaring the state's refusal to ever participate in any such thing. Their latest project is offnow.org, nullifying the National Security Agency. They've already gotten model legislation introduced in California, Arizona, Oklahoma, Missouri, and Kansas, meant to limit the power of the NSA to spy on Americans in those states. We'd be fools to wait around for the U.S. Congress or courts to roll back Big Brother. Our best chance is nullification and interposition on the state level. Go to offnow.org, print out that model legislation, and get to work nullifying the NSA. The hero Edward Snowden has risked everything to give us this chance. Let's take it. Offnow.org. So you've signed the Shire Society Declaration and are planning your move to New Hampshire to be around more liberty-oriented people. Next, sign up for the Shire Society Forum at forum.shiresociety.com. There are a bunch of people there who are already in the Shire, and they want to meet you. If you're already in the Shire physically, you should also come by the forums. Remember, not everyone uses Facebook. New people are signing up for the Shire Society Forum every month, so drop in and say hello at forum.shiresociety.com. The LRN.FM social media channels have been revamped. We've eliminated Facebook and focused on other platforms like Twitter and Mastodon, the decentralized alternative to Twitter. On our accounts, you'll find posts from multiple LRN.FM show hosts together in one place. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.lrn.fm or better yet, move to the decentralized Mastodon social media platform at toot.lrn.fm, T-O-O-T dot L-R-N.FM. I think you'll like it. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. 
So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, connect with others via the forum at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Don't miss a moment of Free Talk Live. Get our archives daily via our podcast at feeds.freetalklive.com. This is Free Talk Live. The number is 603-283-6160. Decent amount of phone participation here tonight. Somebody was asking in our Twitch chat room earlier. By the way, we are on uh, streaming video streaming services, including Twitch and DLive. You can go to twitch.lrn.fm and dlive.lrn.fm to watch us there when we're live. And I guess you can watch later on there through those means. Uh, but uh, one of the people there was saying she couldn't figure out how to call in. The number's on the screen. So if you're watching us on the video feed, the number's always there. You shouldn't have to wait for me to say it, but I do say it often enough. 603-283-6160. If you can't figure out how to use your phone, well, we can't help you with that part. There's uh, like a square of numbers and there's one through nine. I'll yeah. explain it to yeah. you offline. Send me an email. <laughs> what did you say? Send funny. me an email? Yeah, yeah, send me an email. Nobody uh, at electnobody.com. 603-283-6160. Speaking of being online, surprise, surprise, Facebook has been helping law enforcement identify people who posted vi- uh, photos of themselves or were posted from being at the January 6th ra- so-called riots at the U.S. Capitol, according that, to the company. Then that actually brings up a comment I wanted to add to the fixed election call. You know, what hasn't been noted very well is that Facebook and Twitter easily made billion-dollar donations in kind in the form of not only propagandizing but actually shutting down the conversation of the other side yeah that's a great point and banning them. that what would that cost if you paid for that a billion dollars right. five billion dollars does that yeah. fit within campaign finance laws that's a great point and uh, there's no one who's actually asking that question. No one is nobody going to go is. forward. Yeah, no one's going to go forward with any kind of punishment for them for that. Because nobody cares. Facebook has been helping law enforcement identify the people in the photos even after the so-called attack was over, according to Monica Bickert, the company's head of global policy management. She said Facebook removed posts from several militant groups in the lead up to the violent event. What violent event? I guess, yeah, this well, is ridiculous. It, it, was, it was horribly violent. The cops shot a woman. That's a good point, yeah. Uh, it's true. <laughs> and there was one cop that I guess had a fire extinguisher thrown at him and died later on or something like that, I think. Oh, uh, wow. But, you know, hey, if you're not attacking crowds, you won't have fire extinguishers thrown at you. Mm, there you so. go. Hard to feel sorry for him. The company said they didn't use its facial recognition software to help the government identify people, but passed along data in response to requests. How's that not the same thing, exactly? It is the same I mean, thing. Yeah. Was it was it a subpoena, or was it uh, It was just a voluntary... You said request. request. So a request... Okay, so if it, said, if it was an actual request, they can hand over the data, basically, without a subpoena, but that means they are effectively cooperating, yeah. which means, yeah, you're right, 100%. You got sold out. Yeah, I know. There's not much get stitches. There's not much else to say. I just wanted to bring that up in case somebody didn't think Facebook would would do this. They absolutely are doing this. That was the whole point of developing this tool in the first place was to have mm-hmm. a tremendous database and multiple pictures of individuals that they could match up with any other photo to see if they knew who you are. Now, Chris, I got a question for you on this, because I've been hearing for years that Facebook was developed by the uh, by the CIA. And I don't know if that's true or false. Do you have any information on that? Do you you, have you ever looked into that allegation? I I believe that there is uh, I think both Google and Facebook, if I'm not mistaken, had some 
government connections though i mean the one thing the one thing to be a little bit careful about here is that like every business has government connections whether you like it or not just because you know Mine of doesn't. any size of any size all right and the reason for that is because the government is effectively the biggest purchaser of stuff whether it be you know goods and services or whatever it is right um so you know usually you know you're going to be able to make some some sort of connection Mm. So just gotta be a little bit careful with that. That's all. Okay. Question for you guys: Have you seen the video? Do you remember seeing the video last year? It was during the summertime when there were a lot of Black Lives Matter events going on. Uh, the the event happened in Buffalo. This particular event happened in Buffalo, New York, where an elderly man in his, I believe, seventies, yes, seventy five year old Martin Gugino, is approached. He's sort of in a protest area, and the police push him backwards. Do you guys ever, you guys remember seeing that video? Oh yeah, he smashed his head. He ended up with a concussion. Yeah, um, you know, and th- this is why people throw fire extinguishers. And right. I hope somebody gets those guys with one. Do you recall this video, Chris? <laughs> I don't, but I, I, I recall the the. I, I came across the story recently, uh, but I don't know the the what's behind it. I forget what was behind it. Right. So uh, they, what appears to have been happening in this video is a phalanx of armed police are approaching a, a an old man who is by himself. He is in in no way surrounded by a large group of people. He has no backup. Mm-hmm. There's one cameraman right. that's sort of a, standing aside. He's thin. He's you know gaunt. Uh, he's tall. He he is not a threat in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. And these cops are all over the place. They've got their helmets. They've got their you know their batons. They're decked out. Yeah, they're, they're ready all to coming fight. at him like right. they're going to attack him right. in some and, significant way for petty reasons. Probably. And they come at him, and he stops there. He's trying to like into you know talk to them, and they just three of them or two of them push him. He stumbles backwards, hits his head on the pavement. You can see the blood actually start to pour out of his head uh, in the video Mm -hmm. as he lays there. And again, this man is 75 years old. We talked about this story at the time when it happened, and now there's an update from WIVB.com. Felony charges against the officers in the incident have been dismissed. By a grand jury. Well, the good news is that gives somebody that leaves them on the street where some good Samaritan can whack oh. them. Ooh. Yeah. yeah that's, uh, that's I know a tough you situation. don't like that idea, yeah. but it would put a big old happy smile on my face. I don't I don't get you know, I don't <laughs> smile at, at other people being harmed, even if they are. I do you know, if it saves people. lives. If it saves I, one life, I, I'm it's not gonna worth it. I, I don't think that's the, the path <laughs> forward, but I won't be crying if somebody does it. <laughs> yeah. I mean it's hard I, I won't feel bad if these cops had a had a bad time, but at the same time I don't I don't get off on you know other people having violence done to them. No, but the, there's, uh, the a, there's man, enough misery I, in the world. No, I, I would get off on knowing that they would never hurt another person Mm. martin gugino the 75 year old man who was knocked to the ground by the police last june during a protest said he was a little surprised that a grand jury did not indict the two officers who pushed him causing a skull fracture i wonder why he's surprised by that because most people paying attention most people are blind to the corruption that is the the government I, i there's i don't think there's anything you know there's anything more or less to say about it not only that but in a grand jury they tend to bring on people who are going to do what they're told yeah so the, oh yeah for sure the grand jury doesn't just meet and decide hey let's bring some cops up on charges the grand jury is told by the county prosecutor this is what you will do they mm-hmm. are given a you know list of cases and they are told to look at these cases and return true bill and or no bill. He and, presents the evidence. Right. He decides how it's presented. How it's, presented. it's one-sided. He decides how much of it yeah. is presented. The victim gets no voice. That's right. Of course. You cannot approach a grand jury. Now, by victim, you mean the defendant in the case. Yes, yes. Yep. The person who... Well, well, well no, no, in this the case, defendant the defendant is the pig, the murdering pig. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> the the victim of the, the cops in this case has no pig. say. 
uh, and they are not interested in bringing him in front of the grand jury to testify. No, of course not. Uh, or show them the video or anything like that. They just did this to yeah. appease the masses, basically. You know, they brought the charges to appease the yeah. masses. Right. To, to, to give the later they would drop them. Right. And to give they, the appearance of, yeah. uh, you know, the government, you know, you know, doing doing something. Right. You know, because yeah. this was unacceptable. And then they know people are going to stop paying attention. Right. They know that the you know the tensions are going to simmer down, and mm-hmm. you know everyone's going to go home and go back to work and they'll forget about it. Well, they burned down a police station for George Floyd and things seem to have mellowed out a little bit for the for the black folks since that uh, since then maybe we need to burn down a police station for this guy 603-283-6160 if you want to go to buffalo new york that is your prerogative my man yeah, I'm staying I right where i am more coming up here <laughs> this is free talk live I'm grateful to have heard from some of our satellite listeners recently. I appreciate knowing that people are out there who like what we do and are willing to support it financially. LRN.FM's free-to-air satellite feeds blanket most of two continents. It was my goal to put our channel there so people without internet could receive our programs and feed pirate radio stations. We started a fundraiser on Patreon a few years ago to back the satellite channels. I recently announced that I was considering canceling the feeds and donations increased from 15 to 20% of our costs, which are around $1,000 per month. That's a good start, and to incentivize more contributions, the Shire Free Church will be matching every dollar. Can we reach $500 per month? With your help, we can. You can join our satellite fundraiser for just $2 a month at fund.lrn.fm. If we raise enough to keep both of the channels on the air, awesome. If we raise more, I'll add more channels. If not, we can shut them down and go internet only. It's up to you. Thank you for your support. fund.lrn.fm The new fourth edition of Healing Our World, The Compassion of Libertarianism, will take your understanding of liberty to a deeper level and has over 1,300 updated references, new cartoons, and a foreword by Dr. Ron Paul. With discounts for multiple book purchases, the fourth edition of Healing Our World is a great gift for the liberals, pragmatists, environmentalists, and Christians in your life who think libertarianism is cold-hearted. Get yours today at healing.freetalklive.com and use promo code FTL for a $5 discount. There are lots of ways to listen to Free Talk Live. Our podcast has been around since podcasts began, and now the FTL feed is loaded with content besides our full show archives. Did you know that we make it easy for you to customize your podcast subscriptions? We have different feeds, one that includes only our full shows, one with just the Daily Digest, and our main feed that includes everything. You decide what you listen to. It's quick and easy to customize your feeds at feeds.freetalklive.com. That's feeds.freetalklive.com. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do though is to put their money where their mouth is physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas there's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty there's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it but here in new hampshire people are doing it 101 reasons liberty lives in new hampshire a documentary by free state project early movers watch it free at 101 reasonsfilm.com 101 reasonsfilm.com What if you want to hear the latest episode of Free Talk Live, but all you have is your phone, you forgot to download our archive, and you have no data connection? You can call our listen line at 641-793-0191. That's a long-distance number, so you may incur charges. If not, listen as long as you want. 641-793-0191. The Free Talk Live listen line, 641-793-0191. Cell 411 is a free app for Android and iOS that replaces government-controlled 911. Cell 411 allows you to preset a group of friends or private organizations to show up at any emergency. Cell 411 is a nightmare for the state because it proves their so-called services aren't needed. Cell 411 has had thousands of installs, and of course it's covered by the Bipcot No Government License. Cell 411 because your friends won't shoot you when you're in trouble. Without the government, who would build the emergency services? You and Cell 411. Get it today at GetCell411.com. 
We're still not sure why you'd want to watch, but our video feed is streaming nightly for free at cam.freetalklive.com. It's Free Talk Live. 603-283-6160 is the number here. You can bring up anything that you want to discuss. 603-283-6160. And joining you in the studio tonight, you've got Ian. Drugs. Sorry, try that again. <laughs> Who are you? Drugs. Okay. And Chris. <laughs> uh, so let's see. In other news, this is a disturbing story from Yahoo Life. There's been a survey done of the American people, and boy, this is a real depressing story about what people are going to do even after the COVID-19 so-called pandemic is behind us. Now, of course, if you listen to some of the mainstream news reports, it sounds like this thing's never going to end with all the 4,000 variants they're talking about now. And But regardless, presuming... Well, the flu never ended. We just right. got over it. Yeah, or you catch it and you die, you know, or not. Yeah, but uh, but we got over the fact that people are going to get the flu sometimes, and then it was no big deal. Yeah, it's just a fact of life. Some, some people would die. Something you learned how to deal with, yeah. and then... All you know, people will die. Indeed, the question is when. So, Yahoo.com did a story, Corin Miller reporting that uh, while it's hard to imagine what life will be like, then a team of researchers conducted a survey to try to figure it out, and their findings might surprise you. Researchers at the Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center polled more than 2,000 people across the country and found that most of those surveyed are okay with continuing many pandemic protocols for so-called public health, even when COVID-19 is no longer a major threat. I'm okay with them doing that. I'm even okay if they go into the backyard, dig themselves a bomb shelter, go in it, and never come out. Listen, I'm okay (laughs) with people washing their hands more. Hey, I advocate for that, but come on. I mean, they're going to advocate for, like, wearing masks and other You better believe it. Let oh them wear God. them. Here they go. Here's your, here are your numbers. I don't need to see no cowardly faces. While outside of this poll, plenty of people have claimed they'll burn their masks and hug everyone in sight when the pandemic is over. Here's a suggestion. Don't Start wait. Start now. Yeah, just do it. Uh, the survey's findings suggest the majority of people feel differently. The survey specifically found that 72% of people in the United States plan to wear masks in public even after COVID-19. <laughs> That's almost three out of four people. Well, well, plan to continue. It will do just as much good when there isn't a fake pandemic <laughs> going on as it does with a fa- fake pandemic going on. Which is not to say that the disease doesn't exist. It's just mm-hmm. to say that if deaths are not above average week over week, then there's nothing untoward or unusual going on. So 72% still plan to wear masks in public, but that's not all of the bad news. In fact, it gets worse. Sorry to anybody out there who is planning on reviving a musical or performance career because 80% of Americans are saying they will avoid crowds. That is the end of live musical performance. What happened to these people that they're so afraid? I don't know, Chris. They got broadcast. That <laughs> if you hammer fear messages into somebody for months on end... They'll just be a, they, a coward forever, apparently. Uh, well, the, no, they'll they'll think they're going to be a coward forever for a while you know, until they decide they're done being I, cowardly. Because what's the point of staying alive if you, if can't you enjoy don't life? do anything? I, I agree. I would have expected you know, the kind of the opposite to happen. Like You would have done what the government says for a a little bit you mean like then, the pendulum will swing back yeah and then you'll end up going and uh, just ignoring it because it's mm-hmm. too much effort for for what and yeah. it's there's only so long that you can keep up these insane um you know habits protocols. or yeah. Yeah, yeah. protocols see i remember when everybody was terrified about the war on drugs and when everybody was terrified about the war on terror mm-hmm. and everybody was 
terrified of Joe Biden's super predators, um, you know, which is his code for black kids. Hmm. Um, and I thought you were saying Joe Biden is a super predator. Well, Joe Biden is a super yeah. predator because he managed to be a, you know, to be a child molester and right. get elected president yeah. while molesting children on camera. He's a top level predator. He, he's, he's untouchable. He is, he is the definition yeah. of the true super predator. Right. But no, during the 90s, the whole Clinton and Biden set were calling black kids super predators and wow. saying they had to be taken off the street. Scumbag. Well, this I got is one why more. I voted for Clinton once and then said, oh my God, that was awful. I'll never vote for a Democrat or Republican again. <laughs> and finally, the number three statistic here, that 90% of Americans will be frequently washing their hands and using hand sanitizer in the future. Now, Chris, Would, you pointed out that washing hands, not a bad plan. Uh, but Yeah, I was doing that before, though. <laughs> but the obsessive use of hand sanitizer is just mm -hmm. i mean I, i've actually heard that the hand sanitizer can actually damage uh the you, good uh, you good don't, bacteria you don't want to sure. you don't want to overuse it um for sure that's mm -hmm. and it'll dry your hand yeah. out too so you don't you definitely don't want to overuse it. and some people will overuse it and then oh, their hands yeah. will crack and then you'll end up actually everywhere they opening go. up to like infections and things so I'll, i see it too I much s soap is dangerous too because sure. there's generally a layer of oil on your skin and mm -hmm. if you take that oil yeah. off then moisture gets out you get cracks things get in you know mm -hmm. we evolved Wa wandering around in Jungles. forests yep. and like killing things and eating them right and we did just fine yeah. so uh you know there's there's really not that much to be yeah. afraid there's of. there's something to be just said for good hygiene and sanitation I mean, <laughs> well there's uh, there's something to be said for not having an atrophied immune system so, too. so I agree. you're not gonna <laughs> i mean this is the thing like washing your hands is not going to stop you necessarily from getting sick it's going no. to hopefully reduce the likelihood of you getting sick but you know if or have an done, overall impact increase. if enough people do it but yeah i mean you're not going to be able to you know eliminate all risk the chief quality and patient safety officer at U, uh, Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center tells Yahoo Life that his team decided to conduct the survey because they were interested in understanding where people were in their journey through COVID and getting a sense for how strongly they felt about potentially continuing precautions as we start to approach what is hopefully the closing part of the pandemic. I wonder if they if they intentionally stacked this though to because bandwagon effect is real and mm -hmm. they do take advantage of that. One of the reasons for trying to force everybody into a mask is to cover up quite physically the fact that there are unbelievers, heretics in our midst who don't believe the gospel of the branch covidians. Right. They want to see everybody in a mask, and that's why they're putting these things into yeah. law. And that's why you're seeing... And demanding people wear masks in Zoom calls. Yep. And that's why you're seeing the true believers are doing double or triple masking now, so they can show yeah. how they are the true you know, mask yeah, believers. Yeah, they're better than everybody they're in else. the church of, mm. uh, I think as uh, Vin Armani puts it, the Church of Cult of Woke or something like that. Church of Woke, <laughs> yeah. I think he, he calls it. But then again, you know, if, if, if people with a lot of experience with uh, religion will generally tell you that the uh, the loud, the, the, the people who sing the hymns the loudest, they're the ones you don't want to leave, leave alone with your wife. Mm -hmm. um. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing's for sure. I mean, right now, there's no indication that this is going to be over anytime soon i understand you are seeing the numbers are dropping right like because apparently the cdc or the federal government told the testing centers to reduce the number of revolutions on the pcr task mm -hmm. or the pcr test so now there are fewer detections of this thing fewer false positives are coming through so you're seeing lower numbers mm -hmm. but at the same time they're ramping up the recommendations they're saying now the cdc is now saying to wear two masks Instead of one. So they're yeah. doubling down on the recommendations even as the numbers are lowering. Well, the CDC can go screw itself twice then. Indeed. <laughs> but my point is, you know, based on what I'm seeing out there, it doesn't seem like this is just going to blow over sometime soon. They're telling people to wear two masks now or three masks. You Have know, you just seen to be any sure. double or triple baggers? I have not, but I don't observe these I people haven't. closely. You know, I, you know, yeah. I don't take take a whole close look at everybody that I'm passing by in in the streets. 
Mm. Uh, Certainly there are people on Twitter. If you search for double mask on Twitter, you will find no end of the people who are taking photos of themselves. Well, there's no shortage of bird brains on Twitter. No doubt. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That was good. That's good. That's real good. So we'll see, you know, how this pans out over time. But it seems like um, most Americans are just happy to go along to get along and do everything that they're told to do when it comes to these masks. And so and now they're saying they're going to continue doing it even after the fears of the pandemic have you surpassed. can do whatever you want. Just don't try and force it on me. Or Indeed. you might not like what you get. It might be bad for you. And your therein lies the problem. Yeah. 603-283-6160. If you want to join us, you can. There's actually a uh, L- LA Church that is going to host an indoor to- indoor conference of over 3,000 attendees, despite the prohibitions of the it's government. It's scary. I'm we'll tempted to go. Coming up. <laughs> Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at Bitcoin.com. That's Bitcoin.com. Divi's been a pretty good investment for Free Talk Live. Their ad campaign started in September 2019, and from mid-March to mid-July, the values soared by 10 times. It's not too late. Divi's new wallet hasn't even released yet, and other things are happening that I can't even say on the radio. If you want to invest and potentially do well, go to DiviProject.org. I can tell you that FTL is deepening its partnership with the guys from DiviProject.org. Past performance is not an indication of future profit. DiviProject.org. D-I-V-I Project.org. Are you a cryptocurrency advocate? The Crypto Tip is the ideal outreach tool to help new people discover cryptocurrency. It's a printable business card sized tip that you can give to service providers, preferably in addition to a good cash tip. When the server scans the QR code, it'll bring up an explanation of cryptocurrency, how to install a wallet, and allow them to claim the tip. If they don't claim the crypto, you get your tip refunded to you after a time period you specify. Plus, if they do claim the tip, you get an email alert. Create as many tips as you want at CryptoTip.org. That's CryptoTip.org. Tired of cancel culture? Sick of mega tech corporations holding an axe over your head? Join the LRN.FM Matrix chat server. It's self-hosted, so no one else can tell us what to do or say. Don't like the existing channels? You can make your own. You can even connect into some of our channels from other Matrix servers. It's federated. For the full LRN.FM Matrix experience, though, you should join our server via the step-by-step instructions at chat.lrn.fm. Chat.lrn.fm. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. The impeachment trial continues. I'm Mary Corsetti, Fox News. Former President Trump's legal team giving its defense arguments in the Senate today. Incitement of insurrection is the lone article of impeachment in this trial. President Trump's attorney, Mark Vanderveen, argued what happened at the Capitol was not connected to his client. You can't incite what was already going to happen. Harrowing images of the Capitol under siege were the hallmark of the case from House impeachment managers. And so President Trump's counsel played video of Democrats stoking violence against Republicans. Mr. Trump's attorneys accused Democrats of selectively editing the videos and leaving out context. Defense attorneys boomeranged the words of the Democrats. They focused on one word in particular, fight. Fox's Chad Pergram reporting. A vote could take place as early as Saturday. Democrats would need a minimum of 17 Republicans to vote with them in order to convict Trump for incitement of insurrection. Meanwhile, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo coming under fire over a discovery and how the state reported its COVID-19 death numbers, especially concerning nursing homes. Bipartisan outrage after details of a private video conference call between New York Governor Andrew Cuomo's secretary, Melissa DeRosa, and state legislators went public, in which DeRosa appears to admit the Cuomo administration withheld the true number of COVID-19 deaths in nursing homes. Additional fury after a new report obtained by the Associated Press shows that more than 9,000 recovering COVID patients in New York were released into nursing homes under a controversial directive by the governor, which forced nursing homes to take sick patients in, which is 40 percent higher than what the state health department originally released. Fox's Laura Engel reporting, New York State senators on both sides of the aisle calling for the governor to be stripped from his pandemic emergency powers. 
America is listening to Fox News. Why are you still going to the post office? Do it all online with Stamps.com. Avoid trips to the post office, print postage, send invoices, letters, or packages, and schedule pickups right from your home or office 24-7. Get close to 10% off first-class stamps, up to 40% off priority mail, and up to 62% off UPS shipping rates. Go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone, and enter code FOX for a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. Stamps.com, code FOX. The White House says President Biden will seek to close the prison of the U.S. base at Guantanamo Bay following a review process. Press Secretary Jen Psaki says it's the intention of the Biden administration to close the detention facility, which was opened after the September 11th attacks to hold people suspected of ties to al-Qaeda and the Taliban. Plus, the CDC laying out some guidelines for how students and teachers can return to the classroom. To go back, teachers don't need to be vaccinated against COVID-19, according to new guidance from the CDC. The CDC suggests teachers should still be prioritized for vaccines. The districts should be broken up into four zones, blue and communities with low transmission, red where there's high transmission, and students should social distance at least six feet in PPE. So far, the White House hasn't promised to follow these new guidelines to a T. The Democrats drawing up a COVID-19 relief bill on Capitol Hill still want it to include a $15 per hour minimum wage. Fox's Peter Ducey adding that congressional Republicans and even some Democrats are objecting to the proposed relief bill because of the $1.9 trillion price tag. As part of the package, President Biden wants to send $350 billion to state and local governments, as well as tribal governments. And this says the doors reopen again at restaurants in the Big Apple. Indoor dining in New York City reopens Friday at 25%, but some restaurant owners say it's not enough. Jose Cho of Florida Mayo says 25% only gives his staff two to three days of work a week, while 50% could bring them back to full time. Does this ever happen to you? Moments after you're introduced to someone, you forget his or her name. It's a common faux pas you'll want to avoid, especially if you're a job seeker. And even if you're not, here's a tip. As you are being introduced, and while you're still shaking hands, smiling, and making eye contact, say the person's name aloud. Not only does that make a deposit in your memory bank, it acknowledges the other person. And that is more than a nuance, as is maintaining eye contact. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important important. Cutting through the clutter rather than blending into the blah, blah, blah will help you connect better no matter what the conversation. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. We've got today now's medical expert, Dr. Kareem Mazari, here to give us some tips on how to convince a stubborn little guy to take off his Spider-Man costume and start wearing normal clothes so people don't think he's a weirdo. And also joining us is my son, Spencer, still dressed as Spider-Man. Spencer? Hi, Mom. I find the best thing to do is to try and have a dialogue with your child. Now, Spencer, why won't you take your costume off? Because then people will know my true identity. You're not even wearing the mask! People already know who you are! Well, bargaining can work. Explain to your child... Bargaining? Is it not enough that I say take off the Spider-Man costume? Now I've got to bargain with my own child? Jesus Christ! You know... Spencer, sit down. Sit Ah! down! Ah! Do you want to be put in the silence trunk again? You don't like the silence trunk, do you? Um, okay. I'm Spider-Man! I'm Spider-Man! Spencer! Spencer, sit down right now! Sit down, you little face, or I will break the rest of your toys on purpose. Do you understand me? This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. It's Free Talk Live. We are kicking off the third hour here. You can join us. The number is 603-283-6160. At 603-283-6160. You can also call in through our Matrix chat server. Go to chat.freetalklive.com and you will find various different chat rooms there in which you can interact with other Free Talk Live listeners around the clock. So go and get the details on how to get connected there at chat.freetalklive.com. Here tonight, you've got Ian. Nobody. And Chris. 
So we have uh, been you know, covering some of the latest COVID insanity out there, including a super majority of Americans saying in a survey, over 2,000 Americans surveyed, over 70% of them, I think 72% it was, saying they're going to continue wearing masks basically forever. Uh, after COVID-19 is done. I would love to do my own survey and see if that's a re- reproducible result. What I, what I don't understand is how is New York still not open for business? What do you mean? Open? Apparently New York is not, restaurants aren't open for business I still? went there when I drove up from uh, from Texas. We went to a restaurant in Albany. And they were open? Yeah. Hmm, I wonder if it's New York City. You can't uh, go to a closed restaurant very easily. New yeah. York City has the highest restrictions, that's for sure. Okay. So we were in Albany. That's a different story, I guess. Mm. Um, but, well, the uh, politicians are in Albany, and it's important to them that they eat. That's a good point. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so in other news, to see how far they can push things, the University of Berkeley, UC Berkeley, According to the story here at sfgate.com, they've decided to mandate that no one shall be exercising outdoors anymore. Wait, what? Wow. That's right. Uh, first reported by the Daily Californian, the self-sequester mandate for UC Berkeley students living in dormitories originally intended to end on Monday has been extended for another week with stricter security measures in place, including third-party security and student campus security officers affiliated with university police. So they've got the little student I miss badges. the Students for a Democratic Society who uh, took over the UC Berkeley campus because they weren't allowed to swear on the radio really yes um that was that was one of the very first shots fired in the culture wars of the 60s wow uh, things and have changed a lot since then now they're they all hiding really in their dorms have. they've they've uh well you know they've been working really hard using the schools the tvs the universities to turn the world into cowards and they've done it's a worked. pretty good job of it Although, I don't know if people are as cowardly as they want us to think, because I think that a lot of these uh, a lot of these surveys are probably lies to make it look like everybody believes us, and if you don't believe us, you're, you're crazy. Weird. Yeah, you're a conspiracy theorist. I don't know. Everybody knows that nobody ever conspired. That's why there's never been a conviction for you know, conspiracy in any uh, U.S. court. You know, I, I don't know, man. I, I feel <laughs> I, facetious. That I, happens all the time. I have it's a true. I have a sinking suspicion that we're just living in a bubble here, and that's not. What do you mean? In Keene and New I Hampshire in general, living we're in living bubbles. in we're living in a bubble, and I, I don't know. I, in what I, way are we living in a bubble? I, I think Keen's we, we are the most liberal town in are, New Hampshire. No, I, I get that, but. We're also around other people who think, you know, more liberally or uh, more, they're more freedom Classically right? liberally. Yeah. So you we know, have libertarian friends that we hang right, out with. Right. But so what does that mean? We, I mean, we have this perception that there's more liberty minded people out there than no, there really are. No, I don't are. think we do. I don't have that perception <laughs> at all. I, I think, I think, well, I, dude, I can I walk mean, downtown. To people all over the country. I, I can walk downtown and I see people everywhere in Keene are wearing masks. I mean, it's very rare mm-hmm. that you see somebody who's not wearing yeah, a mask. But you there's don't... still more people here that are not wearing masks than if you go into New York City. Well, New York City is going to be worse I mean, than <laughs> almost anywhere. Or Boston. Yeah, or no, more you know, people I mean, here <laughs> who aren't communists than there are in New York City, too. Yeah. But that okay. doesn't mean that everybody in the country is a communist. There's a tremendous level of mass compliance in yeah. lefty cities like that. But yep. in places like you know the Midwest, there's not as much mask compliance. Compliance. So I don't think that we're. Yeah, the, I don't think that just because we have a group of friends who is is uh, disobedient mm-hmm. means that we're you know ignoring or ignoring what's going on yeah. around us. The South is not nearly as as masky as the North. I mean, I, um, I went through the South during COVID, and mm-hmm. what my experience was, it just varied from town to town. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it wasn't even it wasn't even necessarily the case that. The towns that I went through that people weren't wearing masks, it's just that that town at that time wasn't. But I think they were later. So like I'll when we came back this, the other direction. Yeah, I've I had a know. limited experience. I also traveled recently yeah. uh, when I brought Bonnie up here from Texas. We traveled through Texas, Arkansas, uh, and we went through Tennessee and Ohio, Kentucky. And the least masky place was the town in Tennessee where we stopped to get some uh, some food at a Mexican restaurant where probably about 80% of the people that came through the doors were not wearing masks. Uh, so that was refreshing. Very nice yeah. to see that. Texas, however, 
Uh, Texas and San Antonio was very masky. Mm. There were the, the, the girl at the we went to a little uh, taco shop before we left the town or the, the city and they looked like they they had not seen someone who wasn't wearing a mask before they they didn't know how to handle me uh, i told that there, there was there's just a couple you've young, got a face right what's wrong with you right, right. there were a couple young young people that Your were handling dermis is showing they were handling the register and uh the, the the girl i told her look you know i'm sorry i i don't wear a mask i have a medical exemption and the young man was like what do you mean how can you be exempt from covid <laughs> He'd never even heard. Well, that's funny. Most somebody people say are that. exempt from COVID. Uh, How many people do you know who've gotten it? But you, you see what I mean. He didn't even understand what I meant by medical exemption. Yeah. He had no I He had no conception of it. It had never well, he been went presented. To school in Texas, though. I mean, <laughs> yeah. come on. It, but no one had um, ever tried <laughs> to say that to him before, uh, because everybody that walked in was wearing a mask. But exemption has like four syllables. <laughs> I mean, you're in Texas, bro. <laughs> um, <laughs> the uh, worst situation was in Pennsylvania. I think it was the Erie, Pennsylvania area. Where? Oh, that's an eerie place. Yeah, I don't remember exactly which town it was i don't think it was quite eerie it was one of the uh, the towns outside but we were at a gas station there i walked in i had no issue whatsoever i mean there were a couple of confrontations there was one guy in i think it was i don't know if it was arkansas or wherever it was i was but there was some gas station i went into where they had a security guard who said something something about a mask and i said sorry i'm exempt and he left me alone so most of the inc- the few incidents i'd had on the trip i'd been left alone when i simply said hey i'm i'm exempt but in the case of this gas station in you know the middle of nowhere in in Pennsylvania, North Pennsylvania, uh, Northwest Pennsylvania, I went in there. I grabbed uh, like a donut out of the little donut thing. With, you know they had the like the mm-hmm. paper that you grab the donuts with. So I grabbed the donut with the donut paper, and I had like a drink of of some sort. I walked up to the counter, and they said, "Sir." Here's a mask. You need to put a mask on. I said, I'm sorry. I'm you know, medically exempt. They said, well, we can't serve you if you don't wear a mask. So I just put the donut and the drink down and turned around and walked out. Hmm. You know, so, I mean, technically. They I sh- might have just dropped them on the floor. Well, let's, forget these. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going <laughs> to disrespect the the pro, you know the property like that. But well, ultimately, if somebody's so disrespectful of me that they don't think I deserve to eat, then I would say they can go screw themselves. Well, they're yeah. not saying you don't deserve to eat. They're just well, saying they, they won't are, serve you. Well, they are because if everybody does that, you starve. Yeah, I'm not looking uh, to start a fight. I'm not looking to uh, to trash somebody's property like that. Although technically. They probably have to throw the donut away. I'd be interested to For see. Sure. I'd be interested to see if they then took that donut and put it back in the oh display my God, case. If they did, that would be so after hilarious. That. Uh, unfortunately, we left. And I went don't across think the they would have be a great that would hidden be, cam thing to do. Yeah. That would have. That would be such a health violation, though. For, but it wouldn't for, surprise me if they did. I you know no. that they were just enforcing I mean, one rule. They train these people usually at these places to not do that kind of thing because do they, they though. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty. Look, I mean, I have some some crappy working at any. Normally, if you work in in that kind of business, then yeah, once a customer has. Like if if you put butter out on the yeah. table and the customer doesn't use all the butter, you throw the butter away. Right. You don't give it to another customer. Yeah. Right. It's like individually wrapped. No, I know I know the way it's supposed to work. Mm-hmm. I just you know also know the way people are and they it's don't true. always follow it's the true. rules. And, and I know. don't know how sketchy this gas station. It was, was. pretty That's... out in the middle of nowhere. Anyway, yeah. we went across the street to Wendy's and you know had no problem getting served there. So it wasn't that I couldn't eat. It was just that yeah. I didn't get to eat their oh, donuts. And that's exactly the thing. That's why I'm kind of like, eh, they're not really telling you that. They're not trying to starve you of food. They just won't serve you. But now at, and now at the University of Berkeley, there is a ban on solitary outdoor exercise, which was not in place during the initial COVID lockdown. So well, things it's not are getting surprising. Worse. Exercise is good for your health, and they want people dead. They want them sick and or dead. Yep, 603-283-6160. If you want to weigh in, you can comment here and bring up what you want on Free Talk Live. Look, I'm sorry, but you're in for a world of pain if you use Koinomi. The reason is their wallet doesn't support payments. The solution is simple. Let them hear your voice. Message Koinomi on Twitter. It takes five seconds and tell them any pay sent you because they're on the fence right now. And your voice will prove that people care about using Bitcoin for payments. Go tweet at Koinomi now or even better, leave a review in the app store. They really pay attention there. Thanks. 
Some of you asked, and now we've delivered. LRN.FM's live Keen New Hampshire studio shows are now streamed in HD on Twitch. Visit our channel at twitch.lrn.fm and give it a follow. If you have Amazon Prime, you get one free subscription on Twitch. If you use it on our channel, Twitch will give LRN.FM a monthly piece of your Prime subscription cost. So please watch, follow, share, and subscribe to twitch.lrn.fm. That's twitch.lrn.fm. Having taken her father's throne, Sarah Calhoun has fallen out with one of her best allies, and her brother Nathaniel heads into Imperial Philadelphia with a reckless plan. Her uncle Thomas, armed with new powers and new allies, aims to remove Sarah from her throne and from the world of the living. To survive and to gain the strength she needs to fight an impossible war, Sarah must unite the Mound Builder Kings to enact an ancient rite that will propel her beyond mortality. Servant Daughter by T.J. Butler is the newest entry in the Dragon Award-winning Witchy War series from Bane Books at BaneBooks.com. Are you tired of governments around the world killing innocent people? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin is money that cannot be inflated or controlled by any state. By continuing to use their money, you're perpetuating the killing. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available to you now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at Bitcoin.com. It's Bitcoin.com. Free Talk Live. And that's what it really comes down to. It, I think the internet is becoming more and more conservative. I've been online for 20 years. Really? And everyone's trying to make money now. And when you get money involved, you start having people scared of their own shadows or their own nipples. A long time ago, WhiteHouse.com <laughs> a porn site. was a porn <laughs> site. Uh, there was a website that misspelled Blue's Clues somehow and was a porn site. And yeah, you don't really see those nowadays. But I don't know. I mean, back in the 20 years ago, you didn't have two girls, one cup. You didn't. But if you did, there wasn't that much complaint about it because usually people that were online 20 years ago, you had to have a certain amount of technical sophistication. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Want to accept Bitcoin at your online store? There's a good chance you already have what you need. A WordPress using WooCommerce and a Bitcoin address. Now all you need to start taking Bitcoin payments on your website is the AnyPay app on your Android or iPhone. Just paste your Bitcoin address into AnyPay, then connect it to your website with our one-click plugin for WordPress. Now your website takes Bitcoin. Start to finish in 15 minutes or less with no complicated steps. Download AnyPay from the App Store today. Yep, we still do email. Drop your email address in the entry box at freetalklive.com and you'll be kept in the loop with Free Talk Live. Free Talk Live, you dial in, join us here if you want, 603-283-6160, or just sit back and listen, it's up to you. With you in the studio tonight, it's Ian. I'm as mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. And Chris. All right, so you can (laughs) bring up anything you want here. In fact, I want to make sure you know about Bitcoin.com. It is a great source for learning about cryptocurrency like Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. And let me tell you, there's no better time than now to learn the difference between Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. Today, I went to send a Bitcoin transaction and... Oh, it cost nearly $28 for the next block. I didn't choose that that fee option, mind you. I was just looking <laughs> to see what it was going to cost. Bitcoin uh, is broken. Yeah, it is bad, man. It is really bad right now. Like yeah. that by the way, that transaction that you were talking about, was it yesterday? Was it was it two yes two days as of it, yesterday? It, it was two days ago and it still hasn't cleared. Was it two days? I thought it was two days ago. Yes, yesterday, isn't it three days ago now? I think it's two days ago now. Okay. Um All right. 
it was, I think it was longer. Sent at like five a.m. I think. Yeah, well, it's been like two or three days at this point, and we we yeah, uh, it, it hadn't gone through at six o'clock tonight. I looked it up. February tenth was when this was sent. It is now February twelfth. Yeah, so uh, we should start a fifty days. fifty pool. Can you guess what day this <laughs> the Bitcoin transaction, this transaction will, will go through? <laughs> <laughs> we'll yeah. have a Bitcoin is broken pool. You yeah. can enter it with anything but Bitcoin because we can't wait for that to clear. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's crazy uh, what's going on out there. And if you want to know what the differences are, Bitcoin.com will give you a rundown. They'll give you the basics on how Bitcoin works in general when it works. Uh, and Bitcoin uh, Bitcoin Cash works every time. You know, you want a confirmation. In I mean, there's, seconds. There's no, uh, well, usually it's, it's minutes. 10 minutes at, at the most typically for a confirmation with, with uh, Bitcoin Cash. Of course, Dash is every two and a half minutes. And, nice. Uh, and so check out Bitcoin.com to learn more. Go to click Get Started at the top of the page, and you'll get uh, some basic info on how cryptocurrency works, what makes it different, what makes it special, and uh, and the differences between Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. It's time you start learning about that stuff because these cryptocurrencies, they're not going away. They're getting more popular over time. Bitcoin itself just hit another record high. I think earlier today or yesterday, over forty-eight thousand dollars for one Bitcoin. It's uh, it's been an amazing yeah. few months here. Amazing See, year. I'll tell you what. As soon as that as soon as that tenth gets to me, I'm I'm I've moved every other everything else I've got uh, or the church has out of B B C A or B T C. Uh, and into other coins, and as soon mm -hmm. as that coin lands uh, in the exchange, I am going to convert it to something else. I am done holding Bitcoin. I am waiting for the crash. And the question now is, when Bitcoin crashes, because it has to crash, because people aren't going to do pay $30 for transactions it you know, has to crash <laughs> you, you say that but yet people do pay you know even more than that for transactions yeah, well, with like wire transfers and things i don't know man people i don't know will be that stupid for a little bit but there if people are are have any brains about them and they look it up and they find out that there's a lot of coins out there that'll do the same thing for a fraction of a penny you know. Just a little bit of education will change somebody's mind real fast. Oh, it no will. Doubt. Uh, this, but. No doubt. And the last people in are the ones who are going to be hit by the big Bitcoin short. I want to bring uh, Bubba Guido on the line here calling hey, from Bubba Arizona. Guido. You're on Free Talk Live. Good evening, gentlemen. Welcome. Nice to hear from Nice to talk to you again. Thanks. You're on the air. Yeah, I just wanted kind of to weigh in on some of the mask mania who we're talking about there. Okay, here you are. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, yeah. you know, out here in uh, western Arizona, it's the mass thing isn't really much of a thing at all. Hmm. And especially when you get away from anything you would call a population center, you'd swear that it's uh, non-existent. Nice. So and the coyotes aren't wearing masks? No, and personally, I haven't been wearing one all this whole time, and I'm not going to get... Uh, I'm not going to get drug into the mass cult. It's just nice. something that I think it's more of a virtue signaling thing for people to show it's a their religion. solidarity with yeah. each other. It's a religion. It's a, a religious totem, and it is a religious is. ritual to to put these things on. And now that there's mandates out there, the truly religious are doing mm -hmm. double masking to show that they are going be above and beyond the requirements. It's better than throwing a virgin in a volcano. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, don't it's think it couldn't come to that. If we, you know, we want to prove ourselves to our gods by getting into human sacrifice, and maybe this horrible COVIDian germ will go away. Don't give them any ideas. <laughs> I wonder if they <laughs> did that just to encourage girls to have sex younger. We should propose sacrificing, you know. Uh, we should sacrifice a politician to the volcano. In order for the, you know, to get it's rid of COVID. The only way to, to COVID to, will ever go away yeah. is if we start throwing politicians so, in volcanoes. I, I like the idea of sacrificing politicians to get rid of COVID. Yeah. We you know, you got to please the COVID really creative dots. ways to do it. Well, Bubba, I'm glad to hear that people are not participating out where you are. That's uh, that's good to hear. How how many masked people do you see around? Is it zero percent or ten percent or what? Well, okay, this the the percentage has gone up just a little bit, and that's because it's snowbird winter visitor season uh, here, and they come in from from the larger uh, liberalized the population New Yorkers. centers and. 
Yeah, and you know, in Seattle, yeah. Portland, and you know, they bring their indoctrination with them. Yeah, PhD and no common sense. <laughs> Bubba, anything but, else but you want to share? For, for your average uh, Arizonan, though, yeah, we're just living our lives. I mean, they're, they're, this is a very free region we're in here, and it's good. To, I'm glad you guys came on to 1041 K Talks over here. Um, got a good audience of people over here. Thank you. And uh, you know, just uh, touching back to uh, if I can circle back to our conversation last night just for a minute uh-huh. in Saki style. Um, we were talking about species legal tender here in Arizona for gold and silver yeah. and Utah. And I knew there was one other state that has passed a similar law and that would be Oklahoma. Wow. And You're talking about the, the, you, uh, the Utah law to make oh, gold and silver legal tender. Yes, specie legal tender. So it has to be minted coins, uh, so I guess it could be more easily verified. Mm-hmm. But then you get Utah passed theirs first all the way back in 2011. That's right. And then getting back to the goldbacks as, any, as a form of legal tender in Utah, they have, they have a growing network of businesses and individuals, and they've, there's a, a list of these places that will take goldbacks as legal tender. Now, okay, and, you're, you're uh, using of, a term that's not quite accurate. So the goldback is not legal tender in Utah. Only the U.S. Mint silver eagles and gold eagles are legal tender, and that means that you can pay taxes with them, but only at the face value of those. So you never would actually want to do that. It was more of a symbolic Kids, gesture. Don't try this at home. Yeah, it was more of a symbolic yeah. gesture than it was anything else. However, that's not to say that gold and silver or gold backs are illegal. They are not. They are fully legal. It's fully legal for you to pay for a thing in whatever it is that person wants you to, you know, wants to accept. So you don't have to have yeah, a law it. that says you can accept gold backs. It's legal anywhere to use a gold back. The, the terminology in Utah currently is voluntary legal tender for gold backs. So they're they're trying to. They I think it's voluntary like it's currency. A, I don't think they call it legal tender, but uh, the goldback's a great product. I'm a huge... Well, you can actually look at the goldback itself. You don't have to uh, to go to any website. It actually says it right there uh, on the... I think it's called like a voluntary... Yeah, voluntary local currency. It doesn't say that it's quote-unquote legal tender. Uh, so, there's more coming up here. Thank you, Bubba. We appreciate it. It's Free Talk Live. Is spreading the message of liberty, cryptocurrency, and peace around the globe worth $2 per month to you? As you may already know, in addition to our internet feed, LRN.FM broadcasts on free-to-air satellite across North and Central America, as well as Sub-Saharan Africa, and we've been available on satellite for free 24-7 since 2010. The LRN.FM free-to-air satellite signal is reaching some of the most oppressive regimes in the world, and there's no doubt our ideas are making an impact. You can learn more about the channel's impact by watching the three-minute video at fund.lrn.fm. If you'd like to help free minds globally with our ideas of liberty, cryptocurrency, and peace, you can donate as little as $2 per month via fund.lrn.fm. You can help us continue and expand our satellite broadcast to multiple continents. Visit fund.lrn.fm today, and thank you for your help. Don't forget to share the link on social media. That's fund.lrn.fm. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. 
Are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's antiwar.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com to receive our usually weekly news updates by email. Plus, we have a Twitter account at twitter.freetalklive.com, and you can follow us on the decentralized Mastodon platform at toot. .freetalklive.com. So please follow us at toot.freetalklive.com and sign up for our emails at news.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because... I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. When you amp Free Talk Live, you get perks like access to the amp-only Facebook group and amp podcast. Visit amp.freetalklive.com. Got Telegram? You can follow our channel there and discuss show prep with other listeners at telegram.freetalklive.com. It's Free Talk Live. You can join us here if you want. The number is 603-283-6160. That's 603-283-6160. In the studio with you tonight, it's Ian. Nobody. And Chris. We're going to go to more of your calls and thoughts here. Of course, you can bring up anything. The University of Berkeley is deciding that outdoor exercise is no longer allowed on campus. There is a ban, and they will be enforcing it with the police and student cops, basically. We'll tell you more about that if you want to weigh in. A lot of people have opinions about masks still. They still want to talk about it. We're going to go back to your phone calls and thoughts here. And again, uh, Free Talk Live brought to you by Bitcoin.com. As we go to the phones and the fun, we got Daniel. He's on the line in Tennessee. Daniel, you're on Free Talk Live. Hello, sir. I, I, I literally do wear my mask religiously. I uh, converted to Islam about five and a half years ago. And my family thinks I'm absolutely nuts for wearing the mask. In, in fact, they have had me committed for wearing the mask. Uh, and Ben Mental Health Institute, yeah, in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Now, what kind of mask I, are we talking about here? Are you talking about the... It's, it's just a cloth face mask, and I also wear a scarf, too. I like to double mask, so I, I wear a scarf, a hijab, really, because wow. I am a Muslim. It's, it's a Muslim headscarf. Is that a thing that men wear as a Muslim? I thought that was a woman uh, thing. Some do. I mean, you'll see pictures of them in the desert. It keeps the sand out of your face, and, okay. you know, it okay. keeps you clean. So, so now, like, do you I, wear I like a helmet like when you walk talking. around? I mean, are you like ve- like tremendously like fear based in in the way you approach life? Uh, it's not entirely fear based. I mean, it's for my protection as well as other people's protection. Like I was wearing what it do you in my house to keep my mother safe. You know, what do you She's have? Do you have Ill. a communicable disease? Yeah. Well, I mean, I. <laughs> I wear, um, also for privacy, I like to cover my face, huh. uh, okay. so people don't take pictures of my face. That's a legitimate uh, reason, I, uh, I think, to uh, yeah. to wear a mask. Now, I why, mean, if you want to. Now, why would that uh, be a legitimate reason for you to be in, uh, put into a crazy ward? Honestly, I don't know. I mean, that's the three reasons they gave for committing me was claiming to be Muslim, 
which is why I wear the mask, part of my religious beliefs, to mm-hmm. be clean and to keep people safe. Uh, I, I'm obsessed with plastic. I mean, it's more fear and loathing of plastic. I just hate it. It's a pollution. And I called my mom an alcoholic and told her to go to a meeting. And they literally had me committed for it. I don't I'm think that... Okay, just so... Now, I, I don't know what the laws in Tennessee are, but in most states, the involuntary commitment statutes have to do with the person being a danger to themselves or others. Have so, you contacted a lawyer? I, they got custodianship over me, is what it is. They got custodianship over me. They, they lied on court H- documents you? saying I destroyed a bunch of things. I'm 31 years old, and I have a master's degree in physics. They I said in, you destroyed I was a, a bunch of, of astronomy, and this happened to me before when I was a professor of astronomy. And you can Google me; I'm on YouTube. Uh, Google Daniel Mashburn and Tarrant County College. I wore a mask there too. This so was they two said years that you the were. So hold on, I wore a mask Daniel. Daniel, I, just slow down a second here. I just want to understand. Right. So you're saying that your parents said you destroyed a bunch of things? What happened there? Yeah. Oh boy. Well, I bought her new trash cans. I bought her new doormat. A shelf fell and broke the light switches. She blamed me for it, but I bought her new Alexa smart switches. And and they, they put that on the court documents saying I destroyed them. Hmm. And, and, and I talked to a psychiatrist for five minutes on the phone. Psychiatrist asked, do you need help? And I said, no, I do not. And they signed custodianship over to my brother and my mother, both of whom drink way too much. So how long have you been in the clutches of the mental health uh, ward? Boy, this is day 77. What? After 60 days of refusing the medication, they got a court order to inject me with drugs. So I have the choice of the pill or the needle. Have you been in front of a judge? Uh, Yeah, twice. And the the doctor has called my religion a delusion. She said I was, quote, saying crazy things, like I'm a Sunni Shia Muslim, but I'm a Sufi, not a Sunni. Mm. Did you see, did you have an attorney? Yeah, I have an attorney. Well, oh, fire him. him. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I wish I could. He's the only one on the outside working for me, as far as I know. So hold on. Now, now normally in a involuntary... A com- for an attorney here? Dan- Daniel, normally in an involuntary yeah. commitment, as I understand it, they usually can't hold you for much more than 72 hours without a judge authorizing it. So what happened at that first hearing? When did that happen, and, and how did it go? Well, my first hearing was after two weeks being here. And uh, like, like I said, the doctor said I was, quote, saying crazy things like I'm a Muslim. She keeps asserting that my religion is a delusion. I mean, it's one of the second largest. It's the second largest isn't religion that, in the world. Isn't that what a religion All is? Religions though? Are so, religions, but what? God, that doesn't make any sense. They don't usually <laughs> lock people up None for it. None of this it. makes sense. I'm, I'm just, Have you I'm considered contacting the uh, the local mosque and asking them for help? Sometimes there are Muslim attorneys. I have, I have but he's a little busy. It's it's hard to get a, in touch with him. He's busy. The imam there, and I asked one of the orderlies for the number for his imam. They won't let him give it to me. They say it's aiding and abetting to get a number for an imam, to call my imam. They it's can't. aiding and abetting. Okay, they're violating your religious rights. Yeah. You have a First Amendment uh, right absolutely. to free exercise. They cannot deprive you of that. That means I, I know, but you she... have to be provided with an imam. This is a crazy situation. I suspect there's some information we're not being given here about this. Uh, but Daniel, I, I guess it is Tennessee. He said, though. "Yeah, I mean it is Tennessee." So you know, maybe they. This do is some, where all the stories come from maybe, about these sorts of situations. Maybe they do think that Muslims are, you know, should be in, interned in some sort of a camp. But I, I mean, I you just I don't know what actually happened here, Daniel. But I, I wish you the best. I hope that you can get out of there. And I don't know what else to tell you besides you got to find somebody that knows this system and knows how to uh, to work it to get you out of it. Maybe there. we could get Coley on it. He's a little too busy, and he doesn't live in Tennessee right now. He's down in Florida. Thank you, Daniel. I wish you the best, and thanks for the call tonight. Let's talk to an Arco Republican calling from uh, Anaconda, Montana. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, I'd like to start out with a little words of wisdom from William S. Burroughs. All right. Never give, never give sympathy to the mentally ill. It's a bottomless pit. Um, All right. That's what he said. <laughs> okay, let's go back. Let's get to the mask thing. This, this idea of no, 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 uh, no mask, no shoes, no service. Mm. It reminds me. And since we're talking about religion tonight, 
it re- and mask. It reminds me of a passage from the Book of Revelation. I'm going to give you the anarcho Republican paraphrase. He also compelled all, the small and the great, the rich and the poor, the free men and the slave, to have a mask put on their chins and sanitizer on their right hands, so that no one might be able to buy or sell unless he wore the mask of the beast. Ooh. <laughs> Zing. Thank you, you for like that, that lovely one, paraphrase. Know, that was pretty good. Well, it works for it works for cancel culture. Well, see, I told, I think I told you one time I'm a big fan of a of a Christian uh, anarchist named Jacques Alou, hmm. and his interpretation of the Book of Revelation is right on. He knows it applies to the Roman Empire, but it, he says it applies to all human government. All human government is the beast, and it always wants to compel us to do something. Mm-hmm. And r- right now, it's the mask, but the mask is just a symbol. Oh yeah, it's a symbol well, of obedience. All right, guys. If they didn't hey. want to compel us to do something, they wouldn't need to be a government because a government is just a corporation with a license to kill. Would you call yourself a Christian uh, anarchist or an? Uh, yeah, would you call yeah, yourself a Christian that's anarchist? Totally my yeah, that's my total theology. Yeah. All right, cool. We got we yeah, got to give you yeah. our, the new th- uh, title of Christian anarchist now that Gene, the Christian anarch- anarchist, has passed away. He Wait, died? Really? He did. Yeah, he oh, died. Wow. Yep. Oh, so you're, yeah. So you're not you're not a you got a free church, but you're not a, you're not a Christian anarchist. It's more of a kind of a thing. I'm not uh, a kind Christian. of a. Uh, no, I, I do Church of the Invisible Hand. We're actually oh, agnostic okay. deists. I'm a panentheist and I'm you. a voluntarist, so I'm okay. close to. So you know, it's, it's, I got you. So it's sort of a kind of a uh, tax issue. Or it keeps the no, government it's not that. a tax issue. No. It's the agnostic deism. Oh, there, Where did I you hear the word religion. taxes in that? <laughs> 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 Thanks for the call, man. I appreciate it. And uh, feel free to call in. I think I, I his like religion's a tax issue. I like his calls. He's uh, he's he's got some good <laughs> stuff to say. I appreciate it. Uh, there's more coming up here. You can join us six zero three two eight three sixty one sixty. And this is Free Talk Live. I'm grateful to have heard from some of our satellite listeners recently. I appreciate knowing that people are out there who like what we do and are willing to support it financially. LRN.FM's free-to-air satellite feeds blanket most of two continents. It was my goal to put our channel there so people without internet could receive our programs and feed pirate radio stations. We started a fundraiser on Patreon a few years ago to back the satellite channels. I recently announced that I was considering canceling the feeds and donations increased from 15 to 20% of our costs, which are around $1,000 per month. That's a good start, and to incentivize more contributions, the Shire Free Church will be matching every dollar. Can we reach $500 per month? With your help, we can. You can join our satellite fundraiser for just $2 a month at fund.lrn.fm. If we raise enough to keep both of the channels on the air, awesome. If we raise more, I'll add more channels. If not, we can shut them down and go internet only. It's up to you. Thank you for your support. fund.lrn.fm Bitcoin.com has launched a trading platform at local.bitcoin.com allowing you to buy or sell Bitcoin cash via dozens of payment methods like PayPal, Venmo, bank deposit, remittances, or meeting in person with cash. There are no ID requirements to sign up for and use the site, and all communications between buyers and sellers are encrypted. Finally, a global trading platform that respects your privacy. Visit local.bitcoin.com to get started trading Bitcoin cash. local.bitcoin.com The LRN.FM social media channels have been revamped. We've eliminated Facebook and focused on other platforms like Twitter and Mastodon, the decentralized alternative to Twitter. On our accounts, you'll find posts from multiple LRN.FM show hosts together in one place. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.lrn.fm or better yet, move to the decentralized Mastodon social media platform at toot.lrn.fm, T-O-O-T dot L-R-N.FM. I think you'll like it. The Free State Project has reached its goal of 20,000 liberty lovers who've pledged to move to New Hampshire and get active to achieve liberty in our lifetime. Perhaps you're trying to figure out what part of New Hampshire should be your destination. If so, consider Keene. You'll find more than 150 reasons to move to Keene at move.freekeene.com. Keene is famous for its historic, publicity-generating activism, as well as being the liberty media capital of the world. It's home to freekeene.com, New Hampshire's destination for liberty activism, news, and opinion. For years, we've been compiling over 150 reasons to move to Keene at move.freekeene.com, where you'll learn about some of what's happening here and what makes Keene a great place to live. If you love liberty, you'll probably enjoy anywhere you end up in the Shire. 
but do your due diligence first. Please visit move.freekeen.com for the full list of over 150 reasons to move to Keen. That's move.freekeen.com. There are lots of ways to listen to Free Talk Live. Our podcast has been around since podcasts began, and now the FTL feed is loaded with content besides our full show archives. Did you know that we make it easy for you to customize your podcast subscriptions? We have different feeds, one that includes only our full shows, one with just the Daily Digest, and our main feed that includes everything. You decide what you listen to. It's quick and easy to customize your feeds at feeds.freetalklive.com. That's feeds.freetalklive.com. I'm a little obsessed with My Magic Mud. Several years ago, I met Jessica Armand, the founder and CEO of My Magic Mud, and I didn't even know my teeth were coffee stained. A week's worth of use convinced me, and now I use it every three or four days. It's clinically proven to whiten teeth, and I think it cleans better, too. My Magic Mud's available at most local health food stores, Sprouts, Natural Grocers, CVS, Walmart's Natural Beauty Isle, but I can get it for you for 20% off with coupon code FTL20 at MyMagicMud.com. FTL20, MyMagicMud.com. Do you appreciate what we do? Help us advertise, market, and promote for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com. This is Free Talk Live, and of course you can bring up what you want here. Even in these remaining moments, we've got enough time for you. 603-283-6160 is our number. With you in the studio tonight, it's Ian. Nobody. And Chris. 603-283-6160. We're going to continue with more of your calls and thoughts coming up here. And, of course, don't forget, you can join us uh, at ForkFest 2021. Don't forget to mark your calendars for that. Go to ForkFest.party to learn more. The calendar dates are June 28th through July 4th in 2021. So it's coming up soon. You'll be here before you know it. Start planning now. Uh, as we continue here, a little bit more from the SF Gate, San Francisco Gate, reporting on the UC Berkeley campus where they are locking down even harder and banning solitary outdoor exercise the uh, bureaucrats there wrote a memo saying, quote, we are working with the city of Berkeley to determine whether outdoor exercise may be permitted, and we will provide more information on this near in the near future. But for now, it is prohibited. The policies are, in effect, prohibit students from leaving their rooms unless it's to obtain wow. a COVID-19. Go to your room. You're grounded. Yeah. You cannot leave your room unless it is to obtain a COVID-19 test or medical care, use the bathroom, or grab food from the dining halls. That is it. Students. Now, who- is it only COVID-19 medical care? Like, can you leave if you're having a heart attack? Or yes. Are they- okay, so yeah, they're not like everybody care. else that so long as you don't die of COVID, it's okay if you die. Students who um, violate the measures may face the threat of suspension or removal from the dorms. The self-sequester only affects students living in Berkeley-sponsored dorms and not those in off-campus apartments that are owned by the school. Students, Burn them down! Burn your dorm down! Students have allegedly reported <laughs> external violations of COVID-19 guidelines, however, including parties in fraternities and other off-campus sites. So, man, imagine actually paying to be treated like a prisoner. Uh, yeah, no doubt. I mean, no doubt. <laughs> I mean, imagine being stupid enough to stay. What are these kids doing in college if they don't have the brains to just walk out the door? I mean, even in prison, you get a chance to walk around the day room. Yeah. Yeah, you get a whole hour a day to do that. You know, They don't get an hour a day. How many of those kids are going to commit suicide? It's insane. Let's go to your calls here. David is in New Mexico. You're on Free Talk Live. St. David, man. It's Homer Goomba. All right, go ahead. Uh, yeah, well, two things. So donuts, you were talking about the the, the, the big uh, dilemma as to whether they uh, put the donut back or they ate it or they threw it away or they the, – the, the secret is that um, at the end of the night, all of those, all of those donuts that got, went unsold get thrown in the trash or get take, taken home or given away or whatever. So there was probably no big – incentive for them to put it back yeah that's probably true yeah and and as to your uh, university students locked up 
um, we should be using this virus just like the just like the left is using this virus. Well, the left and the right, but we'll just call them the leftists are using this virus against us to accomplish political agendas. Uh, we we who do, do not identify with them, we should be using it for our own purposes. And one of the things should be nobody should be well, not you, nobody, uh, but nobody small and should be going to uh, colleges and universities unless they're private and to your taste for the purpose that you desire. But they should all, nobody should be going to them. And, uh, and if you're an employer, uh, you should not be hiring anybody who went to any of these colleges and universities and got brainwashed because they're less qualified than somebody who did not get brainwashed and programmed at these colleges and universities. Well, I got to tell you, hiring in the computer business, uh, programmers, uh, a college degree was like meh. And if you had Mm. a bunch of Microsoft certifications, I threw your resume away. (laughs) Um, You know, and so I, I must say formal education is not in creative fields uh, uh, an indicator of quality, quite the opposite. Right. And and we need to expand that to include people like uh, medical doctors. Um, we need to go back to the old system where you trained as an apprentice and a journeyman. And if you're a doctor, you just worked for a doctor and uh, shadowed him or her un- until you could do everything they do as well or better. And because then you're the a shadow doctor. knows. <laughs> the shadow knows. The shadow knows. Indeed. What evil lurks in the hearts of men? Hearts of men. Yeah, David, no thanks, thanks for the call tonight. Uh, yeah, definitely uh, university college degrees are way overrated. And, of course, yeah. now they're well, Especially more... for the price. I yeah. mean, co- somebody comes out of college with a degree in economics, and it's and like- $200,000 You debt. finished it? Yeah. Didn't you learn anything? I, there's- <laughs> There's- <laughs> I would I would say I would say this about college having gone through it and yeah. uh four year degree and um graduated with a CS degree. I think there are a lot of students who will absolutely get nothing from it. Mm-hmm. And did you get um, something from it? No, but I for the for reasons that <laughs> it has, didn't help you run a business, right? No, no. And the reasons I didn't get anything from it though were more along the lines of I went in knowing what I basically came out with because Great. Uh, yeah i mean but like so i would say you were self educated yeah um but i, oh, I okay, here's what i would finish with um basically i think the kids who graduated with me most of them probably did learn something in the cs curriculum computer uh, science yeah computer mm-hmm. science um and they probably got jobs and other things that they wouldn't have other been able otherwise been able to get but i will say that the kids who didn't go to college and get cs degrees and mm-hmm. self learn probably were i would definitely hire one of them over you know the cs degree why uh, well the the way you could mitigate with me having a college degree is if you said yeah i taught myself to hack when i was a teenager but then i went to school to get a piece of paper because that's pretty much what i did i yeah. literally i was in the first section ever taught at washtenaw community college of c plus plus and most of the class consisted of some student asked the teacher a question teacher says i don't know what do you think rich i answer the question (laughs) and we go on with the class (laughs) so why would you hire the person Um, that uh didn't have the degree because somebody who's a Mm self-starter is exactly who you want to be writing your programs and not the person who is being told Told how to write the program Mm -hmm. and the Um, other thing is you know i don't none of the languages that i'm working in today existed when i went to school i had to figure them out on my own by reading books, by coding, by reading other people's code. So if you can't, if you have to have it spoons fed to you, yep, there ain't you nobody go right there. got time for yep, that. Yep, the yeah. spoon feeding party is exactly the, the point that I'm making right, right. there. And these yeah. college kids are even more baby-like than they've yeah. ever I, been. They're I, being t- coddled, I, and the, the crazy thing in their is, rooms. The crazy thing is, I think the kids I graduated, that actually graduated with me, I entered with like 200 kids and like 20 of them graduated with me. Mm-hmm. They're really freaking smart, but mm-hmm. they're not yeah. like self-starters. They're not, they can't do anything by themselves hmm. yeah that's sad well it's in my opinion in in really for me my observation was it was a lack of passion they didn't Absolutely. love it 
They didn't sit up all night. I remember me and my buddy Hamster sitting in, and we called him that. He actually had a great observation. Was, it, was this a human being or when, was this an actual his, his name was Hamster, and we called him Hamster because he had a revelation while tripping that we were all just hamsters in a habit trail. It looked like we had choices, but all the pipes ran to the same place, which is pretty damn accurate, actually. It took me years to realize that. But me and Hamster used to sit around, and we'd be like... Man, we'd be coding like video games in C++ and going, mm -hmm. if only we could find somebody to pay us five bucks an hour to do this, we would be so happy because we'd be able to buy better hardware, you know, and, and that's all we cared about. You know, I didn't care about the money. When I was working, the money was building up in my bank account. I didn't even bother to spend it until mm -hmm. my wife got sick. <laughs> Sounds like Silk Road. <laughs> Uh, kinda, yeah. It was like, what do you need money for? You've got code to write. <laughs> so, uh, that's the story here for you tonight. Definitely appreciate you guys joining us. Of course, there's uh, plenty to do tomorrow, but I want to make sure you don't miss uh, Chris's show. He's got his own show. It's uh, Freedom Decrypted, and that happens Saturday starting at 5 p.m. Eastern Time at freedomdecrypted.com. What's going to happen tomorrow? Do you know what's on the on deck? It's a tech show, and just like Free Talk Live, I haven't got a clue. <laughs> Tell the show. Yeah, right. so, yeah, the show. Check it out. Uh, we talk about all the tech news uh, that's going on, especially oh, anything with the Freedom Slant. So. Yeah, right on. And you guys do a great job of that. It's once a week. If you've missed previous episodes, no problem. You can just go watch them anytime you want over at freedomdecrypted.com. You don't have to be there uh, to watch it live. There's also Very a podcast true. available, too. So if you prefer the, aud prefer the audio thing, uh, you can do that and check out Nobody at electnobody.com. He's there. Yep. And uh, grab the latest episode or uh, Cell 411, check that out. <laughs> Divi's been a pretty good investment for Free Talk Live. Their ad campaign started in September 2019, and from mid-March to mid-July, the values soared by 10 times. It's not too late. Divi's new wallet hasn't even released yet, and other things are happening that I can't even say on the radio. If you want to invest and potentially do well, go to DiviProject.org. I can tell you that FTL is deepening its partnership with the guys from DiviProject.org. Past performance is not an indication of future profit. DiviProject.org. D-I-V-I Project.org. Look, I'm sorry, but you're in for a world of pain if you use Coinomi. The reason is their wallet doesn't support payments. The solution is simple. Let them hear your voice. Message Coinomi on Twitter, it takes five seconds, and tell them AnyPay sent you, because they're on the fence right now, and your voice will prove that people care about using Bitcoin for payments. Go tweet at Coinomi now. Or even better, leave a review in the App Store. They really pay attention there. Thanks. There are basically two types of advertising, direct response and branding. Radio is great for direct response with its low cost to listener ratio, but audio can't be beat for branding, which is a longer term endeavor. You want to be the first thing that someone thinks of when they think about your product or service. If you have a local business that you want kept top of mind in your community, call the station. If you need national reach, Free Talk Live's got around 200 radio stations, millions of monthly listening sessions, can suit all budgets, and if we don't think we're right for you, we'll tell you. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. What if you want to hear the latest episode of Free Talk Live, but all you have is your phone, you forgot to download our archive, and you have no data connection? You can call our listen line at 641-793-0191. That's a long-distance number, so you may incur charges. If not, listen as long as you want. 641-793-0191. The Free Talk Live listen line, 641-793-0191. The latest episode of Questioning Authority is next after the news on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Charged with incitement of insurrection, I'm Mary Corsetti, Fox News. Former President Trump's attorneys make their case and take questions from senators in the impeachment trial. Attorneys for former President Trump played several video montages showing Democrats using fiery political rhetoric. But we're fighting back. What we've got to do is fight in Congress, fight in the courts, fight in the streets, fight online, fight at the ballot box. Evidence Bruce Castor says of hypocrisy in an impeachment charge designed only to embarrass the 45th president. At the same time, um, tell the 40, 74 million people who voted for them that their choice was the wrong choice. 
Some Republican senators have asked about a tweet Trump wrote criticizing then-Vice President Pence even during the Capitol riot. A point impeachment manager says suggested support.